regardless of where you are what you're doing we say good morning good afternoon good evening and good night to some of you because there is no other broadcaster that is indigenous to africa that can boast of a coverage that is truly worldwide that is truly global because across the 24 time zones of this very planet earth men women and children are listening to this wonderful broadcast they have come that they may know the truth they have come that they may become educated and enlightened this is by none the greatest university on the face of the earth friends of biafra are listening lovers of freedom are listening even our enemies are coming to be educated and i'm very very happy and i'm very glad that even those in calabar and its environs in cross river state acom going all the way into the blessed land of ambazonia they are all listening because chk 102.1 fm is in calabar as we speak it is also in ecom transmitting all the way into ambazonia we are unstoppable there is no force on this very earth that is capable of even slowing us down we have come to do the will of the most high the god almighty in heaven workers of iniquity the children of petition those who are fathered by the ginger weed before and during even after the war those who have come to do the work of lucifer we welcome each and every one of you because before your eyes biafra will be restored and everything humanly possible is being done to ensure that that is the case as i welcome you i will ask you to welcome those who are around you i have not forgotten the very wonderful work we are doing with alamajri and the janjaweed they too are more than welcome to join us to understand that has been hidden from them because in the zoo there is no history in the zoo the education system exactly the same way their security architecture is no longer existent is how it has precipitously collapsed only here on radio biafra is the truth being spoken i say it with every assurance i say with every conviction if you want to know the truth you must listen to us everything else is hogwash everything else they tell you is bunkum here you get the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth we remain spotlessly clean whiter than white and whiter than snow that is why we possess the midas torch anything we touch turns into gold everything we touch turns into gold that is why we have placed the zoo where we want it to be of course you could be has not us or should i say through the work that we are doing the zoo is rocking it is collapsing every blessed day and i maintain the last rock is still empty there's nobody there they can play all the games they like but as long as you come with your pen and your paper and a bit of common sense with you as long as the ginger weed do not forget their slate and their chalk as long as those of them who wish to learn do not forget their pencil and their writing material then they are more than welcome to participate because this evening you're going to learn that thing that is hidden from you all those things they don't want you to know here you will learn all of them because we are not going back we don't understand what the word retreat means ever since we came to perform this very noble task we have been ordained by heaven to undertake we have never taken a step backwards it's only forward that we have been going that is why those who are not able to be part of what we are doing they are doing their damn best to ensure that they can become part of IPOB, but they can never be not now not tomorrow not ever because for you to be IPOB means you're chosen by god in heaven to carry out a work on this very earth if you're not chosen from birth you cannot be IPOB. my name is Nam Dekano 
I am the leader of this very global phenomenon, IPOB, the largest mass movement on the face of the earth. The only people who, without guns or bullets, managed to cripple the government of a contraption. So much so that today they have taken to childishness in order to try to curtail this very excellent work that we are doing. I am the director of Radio Biafra on Biafra Television and a very humble servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We do not condone evil. We do not condone lies. We do not condone treachery. We do not condone sabotage. We do not condone those who we are fathered by the workers of iniquity. Here we are relentlessly marching towards Biafra restoration and there is nothing anybody can do about it. It is a challenge to ever. Sometimes we say it and they say we are arrogant. Of course we are not. It's a challenge to every idiot out there. If you think you can, you can try. Try as much as you can. Do everything within your powers. Gossip your lives away all you care. We are unstoppable. One thing to get one with you this year. And then you will know how serious we are. And there will be no pity. Sabo, oh, heaven forbid. There will be no pity. When the time comes, don't I didn't warn you. We must hand over our proceedings to the Most High as always. Because without God in heaven, we are nothing. Without Chukokika Biyama, IPOB cannot be where it is today. Without the creator of the heavens and the earth, I will not be alive today. Therefore, we must hand over our proceedings. I proudly proclaim it, that without God, there will be no Biafra. I told you, funny, you know, my friend many years ago, nearly 15 years ago, I said to him in London that we cannot proceed unless the God Almighty in heaven takes center stage. And that is what we have done. And that is why we are unstoppable. We don't worship idol. I don't worship idol. Anything that the hand of man touches cannot be worshipped and cannot be God. I proclaim that that is why IPOB is formidable. We are formidable because we worship one true God in heaven. The God of every creation, the God of every religion, the God of every faith and every persuasion. Because only Him and Him alone does every glory, adoration, adulation and praise belong to. We must worship Him. And this very evening, with the time standing at 9 minutes past 7 p.m. in the land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are, we are going to pray the Psalm of David. It is a prayer I pray all the time for IPOB. It is a prayer that I pray for all the children of Biafra, wherever they are on the face of this very earth. If you are a Biafran and you are genuine, you are IPOB. If you are not, then you are at liberty to call yourself whatever you choose. But for us, we are the children of the Most High, the very chosen millions, as you say. Not millions, but millions right across the world doing the work that will bring in light into the darkness that Africa has become. That is the pivotal position Biafra is occupying in the affairs of those who come from the Southern Hemisphere, especially those of, should I say, of a slight, uh, slightly darker skin color, so to speak. And let us pray, please. Wherever you are, you must bow down your heads and we must pray. According to the preacher, the psalmist and he prayed to the Most High, and he said, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And when I pray this prayer, I place IPOB at the very center of the grace of God. And I will say of Elohim, You are my refuge and my fortress, you are my God in whom I trust. Because you will save your children from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence, even COVID-19. For you will cover us with your feathers and under your wings are we finding refuge today 
regardless of what the enemies do, regardless of what the very brutal state have done to your children, all the massacres everywhere at Mpo, in Abba, in Onesha, in Enugu, in Mbama, in Bayosa, everywhere in Igwo child, they have tried to eliminate your children, they have tried to instill fear into us, but we have risen to continue our relentless march because you have found favor in us, O oh Heavenly Father. We are not afraid of the terrorists that come by night, those of them in army uniform of the zoo, those of them from their police or from their DSS, nor their arrows that fly by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. People are falling everywhere. People are capitulating. They are joining the Janjaweed in the prolongation of their own subjugation. But we have remained this very IPOB, resolute and strong, unshakable, unbribable, unbuyable. That is why they fall by our right and our left. But nothing shall touch us because we are observing with our own eyes the punishment that is being visited upon the wicked. For we will continue to say, the Lord is our refuge and the Most High God, Chukukika Biyama, is our dwelling place. No harm shall overcome us. No disaster shall come close to the tent of IPOB. For angels of heaven are under instructions to protect this very noble family and all that it represents until Biafra is restored to the glory of the God in heaven, the most high, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now and forevermore we pray. He say, he say, he say, as I said, those of you in Calabar, you are listening. Those in Acom, you are listening. Very shortly, we are going to restore our relay station in Wari as well. We are expanding. Even Abuja will hear from us very shortly. Everywhere you go, people will receive this very noble gospel. Without further hesitation, we are going to delve in directly. To our presentation this very evening i know that everybody is listening even people are hiding under the bed to listen to listen some are in their wardrobe some are in their cupboard some are pretending they are watching something on youtube but of course they should be listening to us because this very evening if you want to participate in what we are doing you must go to my facebook page at mazen nam the Kano. If you go to any of our apps, you will be able to listen to us. We are also on YouTube. People are listening to us via satellite. Those of you with strong decoder, if you want to be a part of what we are doing, you are more than welcome to do so. But you must you want not to participate in possessed of weak constitution. Because here we tell you the truth the way it is, without fear nor favor. This very evening, I want to build a foundation upon which we are going to rest our gospel, so to speak. It is a news that we discovered, so to speak, or somebody brought to my attention from the BBC. It is the story about slavery, how a Biafran, the headline says, my Nigerian grandfather, or should I say great-grandfather, sold slaves. The reason why I have chosen this is because it is very simple. I want to let the world understand, and especially we black people from Africa to know this, that we are going through the mess we are going through today, all the suffering, all the pain, all the poverty, all the hunger, all the deprivation, all the absence of infrastructure, because we want to go through all these difficulties. It is not the fault of the white man. I'm making it abundantly clear. According to this very, of course, coming from the BBC, you know uh, we are all slightly, um, should I say, we have our doubts about it. But what I want you to understand is that this very 
epistle from this lady is absolutely correct. We are the architect of our own problems. Therefore, what it means, therefore, is that for us to solve this very problem, we must also look inwards. Not externally, but inwards. All the problems are flitting us is our own making. If we want to get away from it, we must be able to look at ourselves and tell ourselves the truth. There is a debate going on all over the world about race relations, which is um, racism, colonialism, and slavery. Now, this is the headline from BBC, or should I say the subtext under the headline. Some of European and Americans who have made their fortunes in trading human beings have seen their legacies reassessed, their statutes toppled, and their names removed from, from public buildings. In other words, white people in America, white people in Europe, have visited everybody who had a hand in slavery. They've realized their mistakes and they have done the noble thing by pulling down all the statutes, by making sure that the buildings named after these um, dealers in human beings is torn down. But there is another side to it. Before the white man came, what was the behavior of your local village African? What were you doing with your own people? That tells you everything you need to know about who we are. And the reason why, the reason why Radio Biafra came and IPOB is here today, for the world to understand that we have recognized that the problems that we are going through is not as a result of colonialism. It is not as a result of whatever a white man may have done. The difficulties we are facing, not just in Biafra land, not just in the wider Nigeria, not even in Sub-Saharan Africa, is because of the way a black man reasons. That is all. Nothing more, nothing less. And over the years, the people that I call the neo-colonialists, they are the most horrible set of people ever. Those who are saying to us that our engineers cannot build bridges. For you to build a bridge, you have to go and bring Julius Berger from Germany. For you to build a road, you have to go to China to go and build a construction firm. Whereas there are graduates who are engineers at home from our own universities who cannot get a job to build the roads that we all need as a critical infrastructure for any society to function. I want people to understand this. The problem with Africa is this. If you continue to reason like a typical black person, there will never be any improvement in your lives. You need to change the way you reason. There was something we learned, something I learned personally from studying in Europe, in England for that matter. There is something they do very cleverly and I want you to understand this. Do you know that coronavirus is rampaging the whole of America, destroying lives, laying cities to, should I say, communities to waste? People are dying every day. Everybody knows that that very virus came from a lab in Wuhan in China. That very virus was, trans, should I say, uh, um, transmitted right across Europe. It went to Italy. It caused a lot of havoc. It went to France. It killed a lot of people. It went into UK. It devastated populations. It went into America and it's still ravaging. Do you know one thing I discovered about white people? Do you know in all these countries of Western Europe and North America, none of them has ever risen up to blame China? President Trump has said it now and again. But in the end, the people of America keep reminding him that you were ill-prepared. You didn't prepare very well for it. Do you see how white people reason? Although the virus emanated from China, they, they expect their governments to have done something about it. They don't expect the Chinese to save them. They expect their own government to save them. Now, compare that with how people reason in Africa, how we Africans reason. Whenever there is a problem, we look to blame an outsider. We never blame our own shortcomings because Americans are saying to President Trump, the reason why we have CIA, we have Secret Service, we have all these people working and being paid by through tax taxpayer money is for you to anticipate all these problems even before they get to us and to prepare to mitigate them. Do you understand? But in Africa, we never hold ourselves responsible for anything. And that is why we are suffering. 
That is why you see people all over the place not knowing they are left from their right. We never blame ourselves for anything. Yes, racism is very bad. Slavery is very bad. All of these things are horrible. But ask yourself a very simple question. Who gave the white man the impetus to come to West Africa to offload our people? Literally, harvest us from our villages and take us to the Caribbean, to the Americas, to Europe to become slaves to fellow human beings. Do you understand? Do you now follow? Now, listen very carefully. There is a, 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 a Biafran journalist. Her name is Adobe Trisha Mubani. She wrote about how her ancestors sold slaves. We sold our own people. People are wondering why are we suffering? Why is there no light, no good roads? Nothing seems to be functioning, no good hospitals. Every day is like a cursed day in our lives. There is no country in West Africa that is doing very well. People don't know where these problems are coming from. The problems are coming from the fact that you sold your own people to foreigners, to enslave them, to subjugate them. The same thing is happening today with the Fulefus and the traitors and the saboteurs. They keep selling their people. They are not content. They keep selling them. They keep undermining any effort that will bring about liberation. They are against it. These are the modern day slave traders that you have. But they, they don't have human beings to sell. If they did, they would have sold. All of us. This is our own making, not the making of the white man. Adobe Trisha Mobani wrote a book. And in it, in one of in the extra, she said, My great grandfather, Mobani Ogogo Riako, was what I prefer to call a businessman from the Igbo ethnic group of southeastern Nigeria. He dealt in a number of goods, including tobacco and palm produce. He also sold human beings. Now, do you understand it? And I have said this thing to you before. Even in the scriptures, because there is no family, there is nobody anywhere in Biafra land that doesn't anchor their faith on the existence and the benevolence of the Most High. That is a God in heaven. And they also know a majority of them in this day and age based their belief systems or should I say their understanding of, of the mystery of God the Creator around the Torah, the Old Testament and the New Testament put together they call the Bible. Everybody believes in that. And if you go there into the word of God, he has said it many many times you don't kidnap people which was what we were doing and selling to white people you don't sell your own people. It is very clearly written. In other words, we have broken the two cardinal, cardinal rules that God gave to us that we shouldn't break. And that is why Africa is suffering. I want to start this evening by telling you that the problem that we have is in us. It is inside us as a people, as a race. And we must eradicate it. She wanted to say, my father had agents. They captured slaves. Kidnapping they didn't start today. They captured slaves. They called them slaves. These are free people who went to the farm to go and farm. Somebody will come and grab them, tie them for a white man, and deliver to a white man and collect money. I want God to love you. Is that what you think? You want God to... The same thing that is happening today. The same thing that is happening today, there is no difference. They will sell you. They will do everything they can in order to get ahead in life. All they are looking for is money. They sold slaves through Calabar and Bonnie through Opobo. People from, listen carefully, she, she's, of course she's correct. People from ethnic groups along the coast such as the Efi Kandezon, usually acted as Steve Dolls, which are, they come, the white man will meet them and say, I want you to be a middle man, I want to start, I want you to start selling your people. They give them tobacco, they give them snuff, they give them uh, a, a cigarette, they give them whiskey. And the business has begun. You now start to sell your own people. I am saying this for the whole world to understand that as you're blaming white people for slavery and tearing down the statutes of slave dealers and slave traders, you must not forget one simple fact. 
It was Africans that sold their own people before the white man came. Before the Europeans came, we used to sell to the Arabs. We used to sell to the Arabs. When that one closed, the Pope announced you can go to Africa and take slaves. They started coming to West Africa. And we obliged them. The home was emptied. Badagri was emptied. Along the entire coast was emptied. All the way to Gabon. Emptied of our people. There are the blacks that are still being killed in America till this very day. That is the history of our people. And upon this very simple foundation are we going to weave the entire broadcast tonight for you to understand that the difficulties we're encountering, the problems we're having on a daily basis is down to the very simple fact that we don't know how to take care of one another. We don't understand it. We don't look at our actions and say to ourselves, is what we are doing inimical to the advancement of our people or not? We don't do that. We don't do it. And on in IPOB or Radio Biafra, we tell ourselves the raw, painful truth that we may learn from it and advance. And that's what we're doing tonight. Now listen very carefully. Our problem is this. Because we are fighting for liberation. Everybody wants to be free. Absolutely everyone. Odudua wants to be free. Middlebelt wants to be free. Hausa wants to be free. Kanuri wants to be free. Everybody in the abominable contraption, the zoo, wants to be free. Now ask yourselves, why are you not free? It's because of the greed of some people. Other people, people see themselves, oh, I am the governor. So if freedom for our people means that I will no longer be called Her Excellency or His Excellency, then to hell with freedom for everybody. This is a typical, a slave master, that is how they behave. Because I'm a senator. And if freedom means dissolving the whole of the zoo called Nigeria, if dissolving Nigeria will bring freedom to people, then I don't want that freedom. Because now is my turn. I'm going to be here for eight years. I am a senator. I want to make that money that others have made before me. This is how they reason. I want the world to understand that even in a place like Nigeria, even in, a, in an abominable contraption that the white man created, the same white man that came to take you, created a nation for you and you accepted, the same people who are there today, they are the architect, they are their own worst enemies. That is how a black man reasons. When I say it, somebody wrote to me and really and said, you, you, are, you are promoting white, you know, supremacy. And I said, no, you are being very ignorant. I am telling you, can you fault anything I say? Forget about the delivery of the message. Can you fault anything I say? He told me, no, I cannot fault it. I said, then what is your problem? That's the thing about black people. They don't want to learn correct their mistakes and move on. I'm asking you, somebody said that I will not allow, I know that everybody, every pundit in the world, every commentator, every analyst, everybody knows that for there to be freedom for all, Nigeria has to fall, Nigeria has to fall. They know it. Once you dissolve the zoo, Nigeria, everybody will be free. And they know it very well. Even a rat, a cockroach, Ochecha knows about this. Now ask yourself, why is that not happening? Because there are people with vested interests. Oh, you're telling me I'll be here and Nigeria will collapse. Once Nigeria collapses, that means I will no longer be making money. That means I may lose my house in Katsina. I'm an evil man. I'm in Sokoto. That means my shop. But in that his shop, he'll be there one day. He'll be killed inside, inside his shop. His neighbors have been killed. He can see it very clearly. Now, that is the way that black people reason. That is what we have come to do, to let them understand that if you continue to reason this way, there can never be any improvement in your life. Impossible. And they have their agents. There are people, ask anybody of a sound mind, what is it about Nigeria that you want to keep Nigeria as one? What is it that Nigeria is absolutely nothing unless they are corrupt? They are politicians or their agents or they are hoping that their village will get uh, their, their own turn in the year uh, uh, 2099. Is that how human beings are supposed to behave? Is that how people with brain is supposed to behave, I ask? Do you now see that the problem of black people is black people and not white people? White people are doing what they are supposed to do. It is called taking advantage. That is how life is. 
That is how human nature works. You made yourselves commodities and they came and they bought you. They took you by force. You put yourself in that position. That is what our sister is writing about. And that is the truth. Have we buried the world? Have we? Have you seen black people gather together and go to America? And beg black Americans, kneel down. People are doing, uh, taking the knee. You see um, um, Nancy Pelosi. You see a few world leaders, uh, you know, kneeling down. In deference to Black Lives Matter, the people, the real culprits, we Africans are the real criminals, the real culprits. In this, have we ever been gone to America to say to Americans, please, Black Americans, we are sorry for what our ancestors did. What they did is, is absolutely, uh, is abominable. It is horrible. It is terrible. We've not done it because we don't like taking responsibility. Not at all. People, because of political ambition, you want to run for office. I had a, 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 a lawyer once representing me when I was incas incarcerated. And they asked him, he said his business is not about if now the county is out or, or not, or dies in prison. He wants to go and contest for House of Reps. And he used my name to get close to the governor of Enugu State so he can go and contest for House of Reps. That those are black people for you. There is that's now nah, that comes to what I want to preach tonight. The lack of consistency in black people. They never believe in one thing and believe in that thing. They keep going. They keep going no matter the obstacle. They keep going. After a while, they just fall by the wayside. Very fickle-minded. Very feeble. We lack discipline. Discipline. We lack discipline, and we lack dedicated focus. Why do you think IPOB is a phenomenon all over the world? Everybody talks about IPOB for good or for bad. It's up to them. But you must discuss us. You must talk about us. You must. Because we have a stranglehold over you. Do you know why? Do you know why you must discuss IPOB, Namde, Kano, Biafra every day? Do you know why? Because we are resolutely dedicated to the pursuit of freedom for Biafra and for every other trapped ethnic nationality in the damnable zoological republic and do you know the funniest thing is that the people we are fighting for they know this even the house man knows if you ask him a house man will tell you man the is fighting for me i feel this fact a, a somebody in yobe will tell you something because they understand they can look beyond all the old all, all the all the noise that basically and understand what we stand for and we have been doing it consistently. Consistently. No amount of intimidation. No amount of uh, extrajudicial killings. No amount of bribery. No amount of cajoling. Nothing is going to... And they know it. Our enemies, they understand. That is why they are afraid of us. And they must be. Who are you not to be afraid of you? Who are you? You must be afraid of us. Is it because we kill? No, we don't. Do we have guns? Are we militants? Of course we do. We don't have any guns. We're not militants. But ask yourself, why are they afraid of a group of people, a nation of, of, of unarmed people? Within it lies all the answer to your paranoia. Within it. We are not focused. We are easily distracted by rubbish. Every person rubbish. We get distracted by it. Churchill once said, and somebody posted it a few days ago, if you throw stone at every backing dog on your way to something very important, you will never get to your destination. Every backing, every idiotic dog that comes out and backs, you respond. Every idiot that speaks, you respond. How can you be focused and focus on the enemy? That's what the enemy wants you to do, to become distracted. Have a focus at all is as rock. And our focus is to call is the collapse of Asarok. You don't shake from it. You don't allow yourself to become diverted. You remain focused like a laser beam because it's empty. Empty. We must focus on that thing that we have come for, which is freedom. That is number one. Everything else is secondary and inconsequential. Some idiots they thought my absence for a few days an opportunity for them to showcase their stupidity and power hungry tendencies. Let me see the idiot I have come. 
Let me see the fool. Or should I say fools? People who are not disciplined. Who are not disciplined. It's only in Africa. You have somebody that a civilian president appointed or promoted him or her to a major general position or maybe as a brigadier general. And after two days, they, want, they, plot, they plot a coup. That is the idiotic thing about... That is the stupid thing about black people in Africa. We are so useless. We don't reason. That was why coup plotting became a craze in Africa. And a black man thinks, if I'm holding AK-47, I'm powerful, I can now rule everybody. They all went to school where a general will kneel down before a civilian president. They learned nothing. They will never learn anything. That is the thing about black people. And that is why we seek for freedom for Biafra. We want to build a nation that the world will look at and they will marvel. They will say, my goodness, we never thought that blacks can do such a thing. That is why we preach to you the way we do. That is why we are uncompromising in the way we lecture you about what you need to know before we go into Biafra. Because Biafra cannot be like the zoo. Our sister posted earlier today that even these days that men gossip more than women. I said, yes, when you're born under the bridge in you know, Ojuala, but what do you expect? Near a dustbin, a stinking dustbin. What do you expect? Those of us that drop in the village, we have no time for such rubbish. No time for such nonsense. Who are you that will talk about you? It's only idiots that talk about human beings. Great people talk about ideas. That is what we're doing in IPOB. Idea, that idea is freedom for Biafra. Nothing else. If you stand in front of us, we'll crush you completely and totally. Those you know, but they ran away, didn't they? The so called youths running in Yeso, they ran away. When IPOB came, just for burial, they ran away. And we'll catch them one by one. And we'll set example with them that other people may learn. That other, other fool and father bastards in our land, they will learn. I have given the order, an example will be set with Oba that others will learn. That next time when we speak, they listen. What happened yesterday was just um, a preamble. They should keep running because we'll get them. They want you to engage a fully fools and forget about Asarok, which is where we're heading to. That's our focus is Asarok, the collapse of it. Not only forget about a fully fool, treat us what they're saying around you. That was how they deceived us for very many years. Oh, um, uh, it's uh, the minority. South-South uh, and the South-East. Um, South-East, uh, Bendel. Uh, Bendel, oh, Delta. Uh, Delta to Niger Delta. Nobody knows who he, who or she, he, he or she is anymore. Any name they give you, you take. Every rubbish that comes, you accept. Every nonsense, every garbage. Oh, they hate you. Oh, do you know that uh, 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 the Islam, they hate you, man. Do you know if they hate you, I said, who told you that? Who told you? You accept every garbage they give you. And here we can't accept it. Absolutely not. I grew up in the village and everybody knows how much we hate her. EGG, housefly. You know how much we hate housefly? Housefly, where we come from. EGG, everybody hates flies. We hate it. If you're eating and a fly perches on any part of your gare or apple, you would you quickly take, cut it out and to, or even rice. You take that bit that the fly perched on and you throw it away. I want you to listen to what I'm saying now very, very carefully about flies because Sabo and traitors are like flies. Those who are just bossing around, they're like flies. I want you to understand this very carefully. When you're eating in the village or anywhere uh, uh, for that matter and a fly perches on any part of your food, what do you do? You cut out that part of the food and throw it away because you feel it's contaminated. Yes? Good. But remember this. Despite this very fact that we don't want flies around us, any time a fly is as stupid as to fall into a keg or barrel of pan wine, what do we do? Would we throw the pan wine away? No. We quickly filter out the flies and proceed to drink that same pan wine. Because that is an indication that that wine is very healthy. Anytime you see several buzzing around your ears, know that what you're doing is great. We are the only freedom fighting movement standing, not just in Biafra and not just in the Zoological Republic. The whole of Africa as a whole, only IPOB is standing, bearing this very standard of freedom and hope. 
for the uh, for every single black person on the face of the earth. That's what we represent. And when a fly falls into your palm wine, you filter it out. It is called Mamiji, to some of you that know. You quietly feel that you, you drink that wine. We never throw away palm wine because a fly fell into it. No. But remember, if a that same fly touches your food, you will take that part of your food and you throw it away. That is what all these detractors are trying to do to you. When they fall into your wine, as I do, palm wine, you filter them out. You drink it. You don't say why you drink it. To tell them that they are nothing. That's how you're supposed to be here because your IPOB, you are chosen by God Almighty in heaven to fight for the freedom of not just yourself but every oppressed black person on the face of the earth. And we are not going to accomplish it through sentiments. It is not something you do by mere wishful thinking. It is something you accomplish by doing that which is right. Remain focused and disciplined. Don't allow yourselves to be distracted. Of course not. Of course not. The same goes for Sabo. You need Sabo to us to make sure you appreciate how potent IPOB is. Because if another they cannot come. If that power one is not good, the fly can never come close to it. Do you understand that? That was like somebody was said that a fly is 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 like a poison tester for you. In the, in the olden days, uh, elders would watch a fly. Any food they perch on and die, that food a human cannot consume it. Are you aware of that? Daddy, do you know you cannot drink perfume? If you open, you know, a vial of perfume, if you open your, your bottle of perfume and you leave it, will a fly come to it? A fly cannot come to it. If you drink that perfume, you'll be poisoned. You may, you may, you may die from it. I don't want to go into too much because uh, that is the advantage of growing up in the village. When you grow up in the village, you know a lot of things. When you grow up under a bridge somewhere, <laughs> I feel sorry for you. And some of you from that, you travel abroad. That's the bye-bye uh, now. What do you know? Not absolutely nothing. The only thing that ties you to Biafra land is just your name. Apart from your name, you are not a Biafra. Absolutely not. You need people to remind you as to how potent you are. Without all these professional gossipers, you are nobody. That to tell you how mighty IPOB is. The whole world over. And that is why we managed to be able to bring the zoo down to its knees. The people they call Miss Grant, some manner of names. What haven't they called us before? Today, the zoo is on its knees because of what God Almighty is doing with IPOB. We are the people that stopped the zoo. For people who do not know, we are IPOB. We are the ones that stopped the, the zoo, Nigeria, from having a president. They, don't have, they have no president. Do they have one? Let him come out and do a live interview. Let him address Nigeria's life. Let him address inhabitants of the zoo nigga area let them let them come out live do you know why ipob who says you're not powerful you don't know how strong you are you have no idea why do you think they they, they want to distract your attention because you're mighty because of this ipob the world has no regard for the zoo they are crying no one has any regard for them we are simply unstoppable and our enemies understand this I'm ashamed that some of us spend time responding to inconsequential idiots that nobody has ever heard about. The only reason why you hear about these fools is because they mention IPOB. You have to mention, to be relevant, you have to mention IPOB, or else you're nobody. You are nobody. If you want contract in Abuja, you castigate IPOB in Namdegan. If you want to get ahead in life, you must say something bad about Biafra. That is how powerful we are. That without our names, people... Nobody will know who these idiots are. That's how powerful you are, if you don't know. Ask them, okay, talk about yourself. They won't exist. Never exist. Nobody will know them. That's how strong we are. How powerful we are. We are unstoppable. Absolutely that. Parasites will come. They need our name to shine. We must ignore them and watch them disappear. Our firepower from tonight is going to be focused on the zoo and nothing else. Some of you are foolishly engaging idiots. They have no standing and no reckoning. Absolutely none whatsoever. Our future, if we continue this way, is going to be like that of the departed Isikeli Zuoko.
For those who don't know about the danger that the zoo in Nigeria portends, if you want to know how damaging Nigeria is to an average sensible human being, the story of the late engineer Ezekiel Izuogo is a timely reminder. Or the Yoruba girl that was killed, the helicopter pilot. Some of you are aware of all these things. Why did these people die? Ask yourself that. Because of a place called Nigeria. In any other place in the world, they'll still be alive and thriving. In any other place, Ezekiel Izuogo will be like Henry Ford. Somebody built... Do you know that the fact that you're driving a car today, or let me just say in the 40s or in the 50s or in the, in the, in the 60s, was because of a man called Henry Ford? Do you know what Henry Ford did? Henry Ford commercialized automobile production. He industrialized it. He made cars affordable for ordinary people. And that was why he was voted the capitalist, or should I say the businessman of the 20th century. Henry Ford. We have here in Ezekiel his work, we have our own Henry Ford, but because he's a Biafran, because he's blessed, and he unfortunately, he found himself in a, in a British contraption called Nigeria. His life ended in failure, not for him personally, but for the society. Now he's dead because he's a Nigerian. And all the support and help he should have received, all that support and help, they are now in hotel buildings in Dubai, in plush mansions in London, in Swiss bank accounts. Why? Because of Nigeria. And that is why we want it to fall, by all means. Is this the future you want for your... Look at your child. Some of you have very bright children, boys and girls, who wants to be engineers, who want to create something, technicians, they want to build something. Maybe some of them are right now, do, you know, sh showcasing their talent. Look at his work. I want to let you know that as long as Nigeria exists, Nigeria, as long as Nigeria is existing, you can never attain your full potential unless you're a criminal in politics. They are the only ones who attain their life's ambition, which is to loot, to loot and to keep looting. That is the pinnacle of success in the zoo, is how much you have stolen. Ezekiel is work is dead. Is that the future? This is a man that in any same society they would have nurtured him. Everybody right now who could afford a car would have a car very peacefully. There will be taxes rolling in, there will be export and, and potential for the car, the automobiles that he's making. His name will be on the car, his work, maybe. The white people they had a man called Henry Ford. That man went on, even uh, uh, Demler. Remember Demler? In um, Demler Benz, yes? These are human beings. They are not angels from heaven. They are fellow human beings. If you cut their skin, you see red blood coming out. In their own land, because they are white people, they appreciate something good. They were nurtured. Today, some of you ride a, a Ford pickup. You're having fun. But you have your own talent, your own engineer, your own God-given automobile expert. He died in regret, misery, and pain. And that is the type of country you want me to belong to? Hey, please, for goodness sake. If you want your future of the future of your child to be like that of Ezekiel is work, then all well and good. The ability to live as free men and women in a land where the Zwogos of this world can flourish and thrive is what we are pursuing. In Biafra land, every talent. You know in the zoo, it's only their children of politicians. It's only their child that is good enough for anything, for scholarship, for everything. How many times have they set up any kind of competition? Let's say science competition. To say the best science student will get scholarship to MIT, they will never do it. Is it that they don't have the money? Of course, the money is there. They are using it to go and buy my sons in Dubai. Is that the type of country you want? Is that the type of people you want us to respect? Huh? My goodness. Hmm. This is the type of country that Facebook is supporting. Facebook wants the zoo Nigeria to continue so that the suffering can continue. They are the real racists. These are the real new people. Black people must reason. The lives of Trump telling you the truth, they are the ones that love you. Black people, we want people to massage our ego even when we are failing 
Some would say, oh, you're doing very well. Oh, black and brown. You're very black and beautiful. All rubbish. Pure rubbish. It's not true. It's not true. And we know it's not true. Ezekiel is is dead. If had the US government frustrated Henry Ford the same way that Nigeria frustrated Ezekiel Isogi because he's a Biafran, the history of mass production of automobile would have been different. White people nurture creativity. Black people, they kill it. I don't know where they get that. There is this, there is this wicked envy in a black man. There is this, I don't know, abundance of jealousy in a black man. Rather than promote a fellow black person who is doing very well, they prefer to kill, to kill that very person. And then go and do boy boy to a white person. Somebody said they are doing it to develop Kilish. They are doing Kilish. <laughs> oh dear me, zoo. People think that we just woke up one morning and decided to hate Nigeria. They don't like Nigeria. They are trying to bring the nation down. And I'm asking you a very simple question. Which other people in this world will have somebody like Ezekiel Izuogo and allow him to die like this? Without fulfilling his potential. So now his death is gone. Back to his maker. The God that brought him to bring automobile to black people in Africa. How do you think that God will feel now? The God that brought it, God said, I have given talent to every nation. To you, black people in Africa, I'm giving you Ezekiel his work. Take him, nurture him, let him build cars for you. Some of you are saying, Oh, I'm trekking too much. My mother is trekking in the village. I'm going to, uh, I'm struggling. How do I get a car? But God gave you somebody who's a, a car maker by nature. What did you do to him? What did you people do to the person that the, the Africans, uh, uh, Africa's version of Henry Ford? What did you do to him? Because he's a Biafran. Because an evil man. And you want me to love Nigeria, to support Nigeria. Do you see how foolish you sound? All of you talking rubbish, I saw some idiots today talking nonsense about Nigeria. Are you not ashamed of yourselves? Where is Ezekiel Izuoko today? Where is he? Where is he? Nowhere to be found. <laughs> and please um, don't um, say nothing. Yeah, nothing assemble cars. He assembles the parts of the cars. His work fabricates the parts of the cars that he built. The car that he built, he fabricated them. So there's a difference from car assembly to car maker. A car maker is not somebody who owns an assembly uh, uh, plant, no. He fabricated all the materials that he used for your information there is something satanic in the brain of certain i will not say all certain black people satan dwells in them satan dwells in them and there is a good thing that uh, they can't see Biafra, of course they know they can't so those of you who accuse me of promoting white supremacist agenda you can now understand how foolish you sound and how foolish you are because i weep for your ignorance to a typical black man truth is always very bitter to swallow i am delighted because this very evening my voice is being heard across every major part of the world including a few can come lands and into Amazonia, so they understand who their brothers are because may I foresee in the future that Ambazonia and Biafra will go into some kind of an alliance and federation because we are the same people. The gospel of truth must be preached regardless of who gets upset or who gets wound up in the process. So they're irrelevant to us. Absolutely irrelevant to us. Because the truth must be preached at all times. Ezekiel is work is dead. What was the name of his car again? Z600 it was called. The name of the car that he manufactured. Z600. Very, very sad indeed. He is Africa's foremost car inventor and manufacturer. Manufacturer. I didn't say assembly plant. No. Manufacturer. There's a difference. Unbelievable. Um, and people are running all over the place and, and, and talking nonsense about the zoo, Nigeria, our country, our place. And I said to them, you talking about some stupid president. How many times have you seen him? 
How many times have you seen your so-called president? I said, how many times have you seen him? How many times has he addressed you live? COVID-19 is ravaging the whole world. How many times has he come out live to preach, to speak, to talk to you? None. That means there is nobody there. But you are blinded by ignorance and, stu and the, the damnation from Satan that you cannot see. You are blind, you cannot see. Um, zoo. zoo animals. You cannot reason, you cannot see. The same garbage every blessed day. Who would want their daughter to enroll in an army where Boko Haram recruits are the officers? I ask you, because there is a Yoruba girl that was killed in the military barracks. Killed. You see, uh, there is something I don't understand about um, black people in this UG, especially people in the zoo, Nigeria. How do you people actually that something called rationalization, the process of reasoning, being able to chew through ideas and come out with something that is sensible or something meaningful? Boko Haram is against women going to school. Boko Haram is against them um, 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 women be, becoming teachers and doctors and nurses and even talkless of being a helicopter pilot. And in that same environment. These Boko Haram people are being recruited into the army where you have a young Yoruba girl, a helicopter pilot. I want you to understand this very clearly. Look at how Zoo people reason. The same, why is it that Boko Haram and Iswa, why, why are they fighting? They want Islamic rule. And in Islam, in their own version of Islam, so to speak, uh, are women allowed to become helicopter pilots? The answer is no. Then why are you recruiting Boko Haram into the army where you have female pilots and female officers? Simple question. Can you answer it? No, of course you can't. You're a zoo animal. Nigeria. What do you know? Your brains are empty. What is wrong with you people that common sense eludes you Nigerians? Ni Nigerians, Ni you people cannot reason. You can't. I, I, oh my goodness me. Why can't you people reason by understanding that only Biafra can set all of you free? Do you think we are doing what we are doing just for ourselves? We want everybody to be free. Absolutely everybody. Not just Biafrans. We want to set everybody free. Up to an evening, including Janjaweed. We want people to be free. You cannot become free unless the zoo is down. Unless Nigeria ceases to exist. As, uh, as long as Nigeria, that's the proper pronunciation, not Ni Nigeria is the uh, phone, uh, Nigeria, it sounds a bit, uh, okay. The proper name is Niger area, Nigeria. If you go to Germany, Germany, give anybody in Germany, give a German your passport and say, I am, um, please, where do you think I come from? He will call you Nigeria, Nigeria, you're Nigerian. A nigger from a nigger area, that is who you are, double nigger, that's who you are. That's why you have uh, the in the original pronunciation you have double G in the original spelling double G double nigger from a nigger area. A Yoruba girl was killed. We will talk about this thing now. And it will become a social media phenomenon for a few days, and after that we all forget. Typical black people. That's how we are. After a few days we all forget. We all forget. The death of Tolupe Arotile was not an accident. She was murdered. She was killed. An army officer, Yoruba girl, a mathematician. That in any other place in the world, she would be somewhere receiving government grant and, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to find solution to the power shortage. She is a mathematician. Everything in life is mathematics, if you know that. But that will be a topic for another day. She was killed because of her audacity to conduct successful combat missions against Boko Haram. Have, I've told you before, you know they believe in their own world kind of um, uh, Islam that if you're killed by a woman, you cannot meet 72 virgins in heaven. You cannot go to heaven. If you're a man and you're killed by a woman, uh, your life is... In fact, you, you will spend eternity in poverty. Here you have a Yoruba girl recruited into the army to fight terrorists and bandits instead she was killed in the barracks by those who are sympathetic to the ideals and ideas and philosophy and mindset of terrorists i want people to understand it and digest it very well 
She was killed. This girl, this Yoruba girl was murdered because she had the audacity to go into an aircraft to go and be unleashing bombs on men. That's why they killed her. Do you understand? Are you still a proud Nigerian? Are you still proud of Nigeria? She wasn't killed in the battlefield. No, 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 not at all. She was killed in the barracks. Do you know what that means? <laughs> people, you, you people, I feel sorry. I, I don't know what is wrong with black people. I, why can't we reason? You have, you, you have a Boko Haram, you have a terrorist group with a very warped mindset about the position of women in a society. And you're recruiting those people into the army. And in that army that you're recruiting these terrorists into, you have women who are serving. And you're telling me that people are sensible, that they're reasonable? Is that what you're telling me? She's dead. They, they, all they will do, maybe they will give the parents uh, her, her, her salary for two months, probably around 80,000 naira, le less than 200 pounds. They will give that to the family. People will say, oh, we are sorry, we are going to investigate all these things, and uh, nobody does nothing. It's over. She's dead. All the money. The, even the, the, the salary they have paid her is not enough to cover her school fees at secondary school level. So the parents gave birth to this girl, trained her. She's a mathematician, it's very, very bright and intelligent. And her life just ended like that. I know she's signed up to, as a soldier. She may die in combat, yes, but not to be killed in the barracks. That's what happened to her. Go and tell her parents about one Nigeria and see what they will do to you. This is the zoo. In a country, the people she's fighting, their comrades are her fellow officers in the army. Do you understand? Because she's serving alongside the so-called repented Boko Haram. And you're going out and you're killing their comrades and you think they'll be happy? Of course not. They'll kill you. And that's, that's what they have done. They've killed her. And the zoo, as usual, well, what will happen? Nothing. Uh, they will say there's an inquiry. We've set up an inquiry. We are going to get, get to the bottom of this and nothing happened. Nothing will ever happen. Absolutely nothing will happen. That is how the zoo operates. And that is why we hate them with a passion. And as this evil is happening every blessed day, that is one thing about Nigerians I don't understand. God created human beings to have brain, to be able to reason. And I keep every day as I wake up, when I see the behavior of black people, I keep asking myself, is it, uh, uh, God, are you, are you sure that uh, uh, there was no mistake somewhere? Your God doesn't make mistakes, we know that. But are, are you sure that there's something didn't go wrong somewhere? Do you know that this situation of insecurity in the zoo is so bad that today, explosion killed seven children seven sorry one, one, well, l l I want to be factually correct absolutely correct it was reported yesterday it, it happened yesterday explosion killed seven children if this thing were to happen anywhere else in the world apart from the zoo believe you me CNN did everybody Al Jazeera it would be everywhere that is why I want to let people understand about who really hates you and who loves you. They won't talk about this news because they are benefiting from the corruption that Nigeria is. Nigeria, the corruption that Nigeria... Seven children killed. It is not international news. Who killed them, you would ask? <laughs> who killed seven children? An improvised explosive device. You see, when the dead Buhari was alive, they were pl plotting all these things to how to take over other areas. They never learned when an army from the north came to Biafra land to take Biafra land 300 years ago and what happened to them. You see, they forgot one thing. They thought that the loss of Biafra between 67 and 70 or somehow was a signal that they can go on and take over the whole of Biafra land. But you see, I am saying this to the feudal laws, the Janjawi, those who control the Fulani Caliphate. This is something they don't know. There is something very special about Biafra. God may punish us with you or with Britain as, as he did before you came so that we can return back to him. Not that so he can come to occupy our land. 
The more you have this design in your brain to take over the whole of the South, to take your land, to take your land, and bring in every ginger weed in West Africa to come and reside in, the more you lose your own land. That's what is happening to you. You have come to kill other people, but there are those you left behind who are now killing your own children. It's happening in Katsina, the state where the dead Buhari, I said dead, late dead Buhari comes from. Any idiot telling you otherwise is deceiving you. They know Buhari is dead. They are covering it out of shame. So they will not say, oh, Nanda Khan was right. That's all. That is all. But they know Buhari. Everybody knows. Who doesn't know that? That the mass murderer is dead. Today, seven children are dead <clears throat> in his own town. And you are telling me that the old Buhari will be done. He will not say anything. Seven children killed in his own hometown. You people are truly daft. You Nigerians, you nigger niggers from the zoo, you are truly, truly daft. Daft beyond recognition. Daft. Seven children are dead. And uh, hey Nigeria, let's make it better. The people are dying every day. The young pilot is dead. Helicopter is dead. Your soldiers are being slaughtered in Boko Haram territories. Bandits are ravaging you every day. Full army terrorists meet your lies everywhere, killing you, taking over your land. And you have the temerity to wake up and say, oh, Nigeria, we will fix it if we restructure it, if we do this, if we are governors. You people are, you have abandoned the real issue. There is a saying where I come from in the village. You, you abandon the main problem itself. Which is that as long as the zoo Nigeria remains one, you will die. You will perish. You will die. Your children will die. Your fathers will die. Your mothers will die. Your uncles will die. And nothing will be done about it. The sooner you realize that, the better for everybody. And then you work towards dismantling it. Seven children dead. Um, Tony Lope Arotile dead. Is your uncle dead in the zoo? Nobody is reaching their potential. Only looters and criminals, only criminals in political office. Only them attain the height of their profession. Every other person is suffering. And you wake up in the morning and you go to the television station. Ah, Nigeria, I believe in multi diversity, in multiculturalism, talking garbage and, and trash that you don't know about. That's how foolish some of you are. How daft some of you are. And you claim you went to school. What sort of school is that you went to? What sort of school? Seven children are dead. It doesn't touch you. It doesn't affect you because they're not your children. You don't care. That is that wickedness in a black man that is keeping Africa in perpetual poverty. There is this wickedness Allah, in a black man. Wickedness and evil. Evil. Seven children dead. Children, not uh, not adolescents, not teenagers, children and dead. You're not moved, you're a black man or black woman, you're not touched. How evil can you people get? How horrible. If you don't destroy Nigeria, Nigeria will destroy all of you. Let me tell everything I tell you, write it down and the date down. Every prophecy I give is accurate 100%. Nigeria will kill all of you. You watch and see. The be fooling yourselves around. Allow that primordial, destructive instinct in a black man, envy, greed, and jealousy to destroy all of you. In the zoo. It will swallow you. This is a hard man. When the Buhari was alive, because he's a hard man, he's a general. He look at his security in his own compound. Seven children killed. And some of you, some of you cannot reason very well. Because to you, the, the little envy inside you is more important than you express it. It's more important for you to express your envious nature than to fight the evil that is in front of you. Hopeless people everywhere. Is that over? That's in Katsina. <laughs> Let us go to Kanu. <laughs> state by state. <laughs> in the zoo. What is happening in Kanu? Bandits stormed the home in Kanu of a lawmaker. And the 17-year-old daughter is gone. Do you think he's going to see the daughter again? 
present Kanu, they, they are the one Nigeria people. Let's let's have one Nigeria. They don't know that if you have an R1 nation or a house, a house, people are big enough to be a nation of their own. Do you think this nonsense will happen? Of course not. Of course not. Because you've allowed everybody to pick up AK-47. Nobody's complaining, oh no. But watch the day now that IPOB will come out to defend our land. You see them, their mouth will start running. Like a broken tap. <laughs> you see it enough? 17 year old girl gone from the home of a lawmaker. I still want Nigeria, yes? <laughs> you love Nigeria, don't you? The girl is gone, never to come back. Like uh, Leah, she, they're gone, she's, she's gone. She'll give birth to offsprings of terrorists for the rest of her life. 17 years. She's too old. By this time next year, she'll give birth to the first child. <laughs> you love one Nigeria, don't you? <laughs> Do you see how foolish all of you are? Do you see how daft all of you are? One Nigerian is. It's how foolish you are. One day they come and take your own child, and all we can say is, "Ah, oh, it's bad. <laughs> Do something now. Reshuffle the the, the defense chiefs. We're talking garbage as always. Garbage. But your child is gone. That is the thing about between. That is the big difference between white people and black people. Whites will sit down, analyze. They will not bother with the symptoms. They go to the the root of the problem, and they will solve it." But uh, in this year, you're black. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, 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 it's bad. Uh, nothing person, uh, no to see for this country. And that's the end of it. And they are gone. Back to their gossipy old ways. Gossipy old ways. Useless, useless set of people. Sometimes I ask God why he created black people. I'm telling you, why useless and hopeless? You don't reason. Little girls who blown to bits dead in neighboring Kanu State. A girl in her father's house, a little girl, 17 years old, in her father's house. Fulani, Miet Yala came there and kidnapped her. And some of you wake up to open your useless thinking mouth to say Nigeria, one Nigeria, we want Nigeria as a country. You are, you are useless. Useless beyond redemption. I feel for the family and I feel for the little girl. I feel for them, honestly speaking. It's very, 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 very sad. And on the... On, I don't know where... I don't, people that wake up in the morning to talk about Nigeria, I don't... What type of God made you people? If you come and say, I, I, I believe in Nigeria, I'm asking you what type of Satan, not God, what type of Satan created you? Another news is coming. Somebody said, <laughs> not me, oh, no. no what well, I'm telling you is, is what zoo newspapers are reporting, not me. Patriotic soldiers are being killed off by their own colleagues in the north. Who are those their colleagues? Are they not the Boko Haram that you brought into the army? Do you see how foolish Nigerians and Nigeria, all of you, do you see how useless you are? I want to prove you how useless you are. You, your soldiers are fighting those you claim are terrorists, of course, financed by Fulani people. He was Buhari and his group when he was alive. I said, Boko Haram. They didn't fall from heaven. He said, an attack against Boko Haram is an attack against the North. It is the truth. They've gone and they've removed it from, from search engines, but it's the truth. We still have the picture, the headline from this day newspaper. You went... They sent you, deployed you to Medugri to go and fight Boko Haram. And you went into battle with them. You killed some. They killed some of you. You captured some of them as prisoners of war. And instead of actually dealing with them or holding them until the war is over, you now release them prematurely and recruit them into the army. They now join you to go and fight their colleagues. Are you, are you mad? <laughs> Do you say how foolish Nigeria is? Are you sick in the brain? That is why this soldier is saying that those of us who are patriotic, we are being killed by our fellow soldiers in the army. <laughs> Do you see how the zoo rolls? Do you see how the zoo rolls? Do you see how they roll? <laughs> I will read it for you, so you will know. My fellow soldiers shot me on the battlefield for killing Boko Haram fighters. A soldier. 
is reporting. A former Nigerian soldier has alleged that he was shot by his fellow soldiers on the battlefield for killing too many Boko Haram fighters. That is your country? Hey, we want a restructuring. We want to reshuffle. We, we need a new security architecture to put up rubbish. Talking nonsense every day on their useless TV stations. Rubbish every morning and evening. That is what they do. They never ever address the issues. Why are you recruiting terrorists into the army? Nobody can answer that. Nobody can. They were saying they can, uh, they can be uh, 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 president if they want to be. That is how they are. Zoo for you. Zoological Republic. Because a, why, when you see a black person and you, you, you feel that they are reasonable and they are educated, they are polished, they are enlightened, as soon as you begin to engage them in a conversation, you, you become disappointed. You notice how empty and vacuous they are. Black people, there is something wrong with a lot of, a lot of them. Something fundamentally wrong with their reasoning process. I'm telling you the truth. And as this whole nonsense is going on, the fulanization agenda is gathering momentum. It doesn't matter how much they loot. It doesn't matter how much they steal from you. Their agenda is still going on. Their agenda is still going on in the zoo. Zoo animals. The agenda is still on. And what is the agenda? I'm going to please publish the list of all retired, uh, those who have retired a few days ago. 90% of them are southerners. Those of them that voted for APC from the West, this is your handiwork. Well done. They are retired, many of them. Mayor General Ude, Ilo, Ijoma, Dejimai, Akem, Atewe, Wiwa, Ali, Kole Osom, Aliyu. Agachi, Okonpo, these are Brigadier, Brigadier General Okonpo retired. Brigadier General Ogiri retired. All retired from the army. They are preparing for complete takeover and onslaught. We know about all these things. But what are we doing about it? The zoo is there. Zoological Republic is still there. You will see the world. Hey, let's do our nation in 2023. Who is going to be president? And I wonder what type of planet these people are inhabiting. Look at your zoo. All your generals are being retired from the army. All of them. Look at the list. Is there. Please, uh, Maka, try and publish it. The list is here for all to see. Everybody. Okon, one, uh, one, Nicholas Achinze. That was the Dasukism ADC. Colonel, retired. All of them. <laughs> Oh, very, very sad indeed. These are people that spent decades deceiving everybody. That Biasa is a bad thing. Igbo man is out to dominate everybody. Today, they are not only dominating you, they are also killing you on top of it. That is full honey for you. They spent years deceiving all of you. Bendel, uh, Niger Delta, uh, South South, um, uh, Midwest, uh, Upper West, uh, Middle Belt. Gerrymandering and cutting people up into pieces, whereas they are busy planning every day. They are planning every house to you over. And those of us, so I will say, those of us from the south, because that's been a development I'll talk about that later on. Those of us from the south always messing about, and uh, <laughs> of course, allowing our envious nature to get the best part of us. Here it is now. Who is going to save you? This Fulani presidency, they have, as somebody said, they have serially, deceitfully, and masterfully completed the configuration of the entire zoo security structure. They have now placed it firmly in the hands of northern Muslims, Fulani alone, to the exclusion of every other ethnic bloc in Nigeria. Yet, people that went to school cannot see this as a problem. They don't see it as a problem. That's how sad they are. Now, let me tell you something that you don't know. In any, can you imagine this being Jonathan's administration 
Hey, by now, every Biafran in the North would have been beheaded by now. Let me call them out for you so you know. Those who are responsible for the mess in the zoo and why they place their, their men in all key positions. Chief of Army Staff is from the North, Muslim. Fulani, forget Hausa Fulani. There is nothing like Hausa Fulani. Hausa Fulani people are vassals to the to the Fulani people. Hausa is vassal to the Fulani. They are nothing. Please don't say Hausa Fulani is Fulani. Police is the general of police. Sorry, police IG, Northern Muslim Fulani. Minister for Defense, Northern Muslim Fulani. Minister for these are heavy heavy portfolios. Minister for Internal Affairs. Northern Muslim Fulani, National Security Advisor, Northern Muslim Fulani, DSS, DG DSS, that's Director General of um, DSS, the Secret uh, Police, Northern Muslim Fulani, the Chief of Staff, Northern Muslim Fulani, ABC to President, Northern Muslim Fulani, the Chief Security Officer to President, Northern Muslim Fulani, Protocol to President, Northern Muslim Fulani, Private Secretary to the President, Northern Muslim Fulani, DG Customs, Northern Muslim Fulani, DG EFCC, the one they just suspended, Northern Muslim Fulani, DG Nigeria Prisons, Northern Muslim Fulani, DG Immigration, Northern Muslim Fulani, Minister for Petroleum, Northern Muslim Fulani, Minister for FCT, Northern Muslim Fulani. And you are still in one Nigeria, yes? Are you all part of the same one Nigeria? funny foolish people you're not only funny but you're very foolish you nigerians nigger people you're not only funny you're very very foolish look at it if this had been jonathan's administration or me or Basanjo, hey, hey, you will come outside the, the next day but here you are and people are defending this people are defending this Oh, black people in this UG. Black, black. Let me tell you something, please. Amaka also published this very one. That was an interse intercepted telegram. The M branch, uh, our own IPOB intelligence, the, the very best there is. It's just because we don't have a state. The very best, I tell you. We intercepted a secure communication between an army officer in the field and the zoo defense headquarters over the mess going on in the Fulani controlled north in the phony war against Fulani terrorism it's not Boko Haram or ISO it is Fulani terrorism that's what you're fighting Fulani terrorism Fulani corrupt feudal lords fighting Fulani terrorism they themselves created that's what's happening they say our army is in the northwest fighting insurgency no who created the insurgency Fulani who are the insurgents of Fulani? Who are the terrorists of Fulani Muslims? That's who they are. And who are the ones fighting them? Okay, Fulani officers. But with um, Southern recruits, the ones who are being killed. This is a letter. I will try to read this letter verbatim. Please, Amaka, publish it. It's a highly classified document. I think they'll be wondering, uh, uh, they shouldn't wonder anymore. I know what happens inside Asorok. Uh, is it defense as well as that I will not know? I know everything. We know everything. Listen. Sir, this is a communication from an officer in the field to defense headquarters in Abuja, from Medugri to Abuja. Listen very carefully, please. Sir, terrorist ambush, you know, it's a telegram. That's a full stop. At about 07.14, 071410A, that's what they, you know, Army, Army code. July 20, troops of Sector 2 were ambushed by suspected terrorists at Bula, Bula Bulin in Damboa, local government area. Full stop. 2S, which is two teams of reinforcement, were dispatched to the scene. Full stop. The first team confirmed the details at the scene while the second team linked up and returned to the camp. Own cars as chief of army staff, O W N, uh, uh, killed in action 23 soldiers, wounded in action one, uh, sorry, one times two soldiers, whatever that means, missing in action, unconfirmed. Many of them are missing, taken prisoner or taken hostage by Boko Haram. However, the the WIA wounded in action WIA are currently being stabilized 
at the brigade uh, uh, FDAMB. I don't know what that means. Brig brigade FDAMB. We will need to analyze this more. While um, some are, uh, uh, those who are seriously injured are uh, undergoing operations. Further details later. Now, number two. The, the, the army is now, according to your telegram, advancing into the Timbuktu Triangle. He's saying advance into the Timbuktu Triangle is becoming cumbersome now that the rain is at top gear. It's rainy season there as well. Rain is falling there. Coincidentally, terrorist elements have reinforced their defenses to halt the advance and any army incursions into the area. Unfortunately, troops ambushed by daylight shows the level of preparation by Iswa. No longer Boko Haram. Listen carefully. They, they, they lie to you always. They tell it is Boko Haram they are fighting. No, they are fighting Iswa. And who is Iswa? Iswa is, the, is Al Badawi, the son of the Boko Haram founder and leader, the dead Muhammad Yusuf. This was the boy, the season boy was going to court the same time that I was going to court in 2016 this boy was arrested Albanawi was arrested this was the boy that Buhari himself recruited I don't know why people are so daft Buhari himself recruited this very boy to split Boko Haram no matter what they were you know when when they find you very difficult they try to split you by forming groups they brought in they brought out this boy to challenge Shekau Shekau was too strong you know what Buhari did? Buhari now said, you people should not attack mosques or civilians. Only attack non-believers, infidels, and the army. That was his coming. Do you know what happened to this boy when he was in court? He was released from, from high court in Abuja in broad daylight. He was not tried. He was released. Buhari asked for, when Buhari was Buhari asked for this boy to be released. He gave him his own command, his own terrorist group, Iswa. They aligned with ISIS because, because Buhari was a very big fan of ISIS. This ask yourself why was this boy taken to court in Abuja and released? You are asked those who are detaining for freedom without any guns or bombs are still being detained. Ask yourself that question. He came out. He is not the one now fighting them back. How can you see it here? It's not not Boko Haram, but this one. And the, the man is now warning that the commander is now telling DHQ, Defense Headquarters in Abuja, that this should not be taken lightly. Troops were also ambushed at Komala Axis on June 20th. And 11 soldiers were killed while escorting commuter vehicles. Please, Amaka, publish the pictures of those dead soldiers that the world may know. That IPOB intelligence is, 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 is one in town. Publish their pictures because we have them. Publish it that the world may know how formidable we are. Please note, listen on, please note, number of IED incidents have also increased, suggesting that ISWA, that's ISIS, are, in, are initiating all available means to frustrate troops' incursions. As such, it is requested that air raids are initiated within Damboa Axis to hit hard and neutralize reinforced terrorist camps and what they may have cut away. Do you know that? They defeat the army and they take the army equipment from the zoo. Are you aware of that? So I'm telling America and Britain because they're all listening. All that uh, equipment you provide to Nigerian army, they are now in the hands of ISIS in West Africa, Iswa. Because it's here, confirmed by the army. This is a telegram of the army. It's secret, it's secret, but I have it. We have it. We are IPOB. And there is nothing they do we don't know. And they know it. Here it is. The, it's Boko Haram is bad. Boko, but you can see that the people who are actually bad <laughs> is ISIS, not Boko Haram. You can see it here from the telegram. This could also, now they are now asking for, for bombing raids to be carried out in their own land in the north. Remember what I told you in the year 2012? I told you in the year 2012 that everything that Biafra endured during the war, that our enemies will go through it. Today they are in IDP camps. They are suffering from malnutrition. They are being raped. They are women in IDP camps, yes? And they are now dropping bombs. The same thing they did, but they are now dropping bombs in the lands of the north. Everything that I told you, everything that I told you about. 
and he said number three respectfully forwarded for your information and necessary action sir this is from the battlefield to defense headquarters and we intercepted it we have their pictures and we have this very telegram as well or should i say dispatch and if you add to all this nonsense you have seen full army at the helm of every security outfit yet look at the scale of his security and britain is not talking Nobody is speaking, saying anything. No, not at all. Because he's their favorite uh, child who is in, or she, in the name of their, or their favorite tribe that is in power. Fulani, they cannot do it. To the British, the Fulani cannot do any wrong. They can kill everybody. Britain, we say, is um, from a header clash. Or a natural phenomenon. That's what they will say. Unbelievable. Add to all of these things, the head of the National Assembly or Senate is a Northern Muslim. The head of Judiciary is a Northern Muslim. The head of the Courts of Appeal, Northern Muslim. <laughs> and you're still in the zoo, shouting one Nigeria. Shame on to all of you, all of you. Why is it that some people do not see anything bad in this arrangement and in this development? Why can't people see something bad in it? The answer, in my own reckoning, is in the DNA of a black man. The satanic nature of a black man always gravitating towards evil always gravitating towards evil anywhere you see evil you see a black man you see that supporting evil shamefully and should i say hopelessly supporting evil look at this you nigeria created by the british and given to you i'm a proud uh, nigeria i'm from nigeria i'm proud did you create nigeria it was created it was created by the British. Not you. It is now DNA. <laughs> now, the full intention of the Fulani presidency is now clear for everybody to see. Is it in the lopsided arrangement? Is it in their, in their, in their overbearing domination of every apparatus of state? Every department they are there. I call it modern day Fulani colonialism. And some of you cannot see. Every day you come, you are begging them, oh, why don't you give us one slot? Give us one position now. And the funniest thing is that they are doing all these things without any recognized head of state. There is nobody who is the president, there is no vice. When was the last time you saw Sibra Job? Nobody can tell me till today. You all know that very well, don't you? Fulani, they are doing all of these things to you without head of state. Imagine when they have a proper head of state, what they would do to all, all of you. Now, do you understand? Now, do you understand? Now, you know, don't you? It's the zoo. That is how they roll. That is how the zoo operates. That is how they roll. The zoo military, Fulani, they are getting ready for their full-scale jihad. They are still using the name of the dead Buhari, Buhari regime. They are uh, Mr. President. When I hear people talk about Mr. President, I get very sick. The cowardly southern political class is doing exactly as they are told because it was the Janjaweed that brought them out. He was falling and appointed all of them. They decide who goes and who doesn't. Look at Timo State, for example. Tells you all you need to know about the zoo about the zoo oh dear. the day black people supposedly educated black men accepted to answer the name nigger as a name was the day we sealed our miserable fate nigeria i wonder what was there as if he went to school in america he was in america so he should have known what the word nigger meant he came back he said i want to be the president of nigeria very sad indeed. Only Biafra can save the black race. And this is the reason why Satan, Eponsu, and all his agents are doing their best to distract us. They are doing their best to stop us. But they will continue to fail very woefully. Woefully, they will fail, as they have always failed. The zoo Nigerians, they think mere rhetoric can save them. Talking about presidency, let us restructure. They know they have conveniently forgotten that this rogue Fulani regime means evil for everybody. You will all suffer and die in it unless you reason 
and become sensible now, not tomorrow. Now, not tomorrow. They control customs. Why do they control? I will let us tell you. Somebody did a very good job. In fact, Doctor Abaziambe. That was what he wrote as his name. Let me tell you, he did a very beautiful work. Let me explain to you why they control you. Why they have full and has control over your lives. I'm telling you. For some of you, the level of control that Fulani has over your lives, <laughs> I, I don't think another thing has it. I'm telling you the truth. And listen, the Fulani, they control the customs so they can bring in weapons of war all the way to Kaduna Dry Port. That's what, that was why they did. They planned it very well, Elufai and the dead Buhari. They planned it very well and they're executing it now. Dry Port in Kaduna. <laughs> they control immigration so they can bring in as many full and fighters from across West Africa and North Africa as possible. They control the, the police so there will be no investigation and enforcement of laws against killer full and headsmen. They control the National Assembly so there will be no adverse parliamentary proceedings against them. They control the DSS so that if you talk, they will shut you down. They control the judiciary so that once your case reaches the Supreme Court, it is dead. They control the army so that if you fight back, they will use federal resources to pattern dance you. They control the executive branch so they can dip into the national treasury to fund the foreignization of Zoo Nigeria. They control the Ministry of Information so they can control what you hear and they set up their own radio station. They, they control Yoruba Muslims to make sure that the South stays divided. What other proof do you need? What other proof do you need, I ask you? None whatsoever. Now, to make matters worse, some of you may have forgotten, but it's, it's our job to remind you. We keep forgetting, we keep reminding you. The full army, I'm going to quote verbatim. A statement by the Fulani Nationality Movement issued in Kanu as a press statement on Saturday, January 13, 2018. You have all forgotten, but we have not. So I'm going to remind you. Now, this is what the media really said. The Fulani Nationality Movement, FUNAM, F-U-N-A-M, after extensive deliberations on the state of the nation, we hereby make the following declaration. These are Fulani people, your fellow Nigerians, all of you are doing uh, your beautiful zoo uh, together playing uh, catch me and kill me with them. This is what they're saying, your fellow Nigerians. That we have asked all Fulani across West Africa to raise money and arms to prosecute the oncoming war. We call on all Fulanis to prepare for this holy war. There is no going back. All over the world, Nigeria is the only country given to Fulani by God. That the cattle colony is the only solution to this crisis. Whether the federal government or state governments accept or not, we have asked all Fulani headsmen all over West Africa to move to Nigeria and penetrate every corner for the upcoming jihad. We have asked them to we have asked them to be armed since it seems it is the only language Nigeria understands. A statement by Fulani Nationality Movement Funam. Saturday, January 13, 2018. <laughs> and you would think, some would say, oh no, he's propaganda. Oh, they leave IPOB. They're always doing their propaganda. They're casting the government in a bad light. You know when they do, that's why when they go out, they go to Vietnam, they tell the Vietnamese government, hey, don't allow IPOB here. They're giving us, I'll get to that later. They're giving us problems. But that thing they said, the full said in 2018, here now, in that same 2018, you know what they did? Benue belongs to Fulani headsmen by right of conquest, according to Daily Post. So you will not accuse IPOB. You will not say it is a Biafra newspaper. No. It's from a Nigerian newspaper. Benue belongs to Fulani headsmen by right of conquest. Professor Muhammad. And the people from Benue are still, they wake up in the morning and they say, one Nigeria. And you're telling me that people are that well in the brain? Can you see it? They said to their people, come, come, come and conquer. They have come and they have conquered. It is here. They have come and they have conquered. Yes, as somebody said, they are playing Russian roulette, catch me and kill me. That's what we are doing with her, with her, her full terrorists. 
If they catch you, if you're lucky, they behead you or they kill you. And the zoo continues the next day. The next news will come. Uh, let us look at um, uh, maybe Big Brother. Or let us look at um, how things are going. Uh, how uh, this celebrity is doing what? Confusing all of you. And you're being eaten up alive by the day. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Who is responsible for this? Somebody from Middle Belt. It was go on that laid the foundation for the disease that everybody is suffering today. We are the architects of our own misfortune. Today, Middle Belt is in trouble. They are turning it upside down. And who brought it about? A Middle Belt and somebody from go on. A Christian for that matter. Look at this zoo today and where it is. We condone evil. I keep saying it. In fact, every morning and evening, those that pray to God, every black person, you must keep praying every blessed day. God, remove evil tendencies from my heart. God, remove jealousy. God, remove envy. God, remove wickedness. I am a black man. Remove evil from me. I'm telling you the truth. Every blessed day. I'm telling you, because we support evil, we not, as I said before, we naturally gravitate towards iniquity. That is why the black race is backwards. And that is why it will continue until we change, until our brain, the way we reason, changes. Funny, I'm playing games with all of you. You don't know. I kept quiet for seven days. They thought, hey, oh, he's gone. Oh, now let us um, uh, try and uh, and even accelerate our the, the our wickedness and our evil. <laughs> it's go one that cost it. We are now on the verge today of total conquest because of a mistake that Britain made. Certain racists in the British colonial establishment, including the BBC, and to a lesser extent now, even today, BBC, they have continuously reinforced the superiority complex of neocolonialists. They denigrate, they subtly, very subtly, they insult and they demean you without anybody knowing. You think they're doing you a favor? Of course not. Very cleverly, very, I, I, of course, I read in England, so I know, I know their tricks. Very cleverly, they'll be insulting you and putting you down, but you will not know. And I tell you to an Afri breeze, you will not know. Like a, a house or rat. As they are chewing the sole of your, of your feet, they are blowing you breeze. So you won't feel a thing. The thing we don't know, of course, we know. Why do you think IPB is as strong as we are? Because we know everything. We know all their games. We know the games that they are playing. That is why today, when you hear about Zamfara, people are selling their houses to bandits in Zamfara. According to an emir, the emir of Guzo, people are selling their houses to bandits in Zamfara. Bandits are now landlords. Who are bandits? These are fallen terrorists from Mauritania, from Mali. Just name it up from everywhere they have come. And you're still tomorrow morning. Nigeria, we need to reposition Nigeria. We need to restructure. When you know the solution lies in the complete dissolution of the damnable contraption. Black people are evil. If not that black people are evil, there is no way learned people, educated people, can wake up to this rubbish every blessed day. Every blessed day, the same nonsense, the same garbage, no light, no water, no hospitals, no good schools, no jobs. You graduate, you come out, you have nothing, no hope, nothing whatsoever. And you still say you're a, you're a Nigerian. God have mercy on your, on your ignorance. Unbelievable. Bandits are now landlords. In Guzo, Fulani owns uh, Benue by right. And uh, the name, uh, well, be wasting your time. <laughs> and what happened to the others in history will also happen to you. It will happen to you. Evil every blessed day. Please tell me how many Nigerian soldiers, Nigerian soldiers were killed in Katsina. This is not, not, not a Meduguri or not Bruno. In Katsina, the same state of the hard man. The, the general, you know, nonsense. You know, I remember when Tinubu was promoting uh, uh, Buhari before, before uh, 2020, before 2015 election. He is a hard man, a general, a no nonsense general. <laughs> but in his state <laughs> of Katsina, the late uh, no nonsense general 
Fulani terrorists, probably maybe from within or from outside, nobody knows, have now ambushed their Fulani terrorists or soldiers and killed 16 of them. Terrorists of terrorists. That's what is happening now. One is in uniform, one is in uh, is in Islamic garb, of, uh, is in her uh, uh, Al-Qaeda uh, outfit. Terror, fighting terror in the zoo in Katsina. And nobody has been sacked, nobody removed, nobody called to resign, nothing. Imagine if it was in Hejrika as the chief of army staff and the terrorists who ambush Nigerian soldiers 16 and kill them in Katsina. Hey, they will burn his house down. They will kill his whole family. But this rubbish is happening every blessed day. And what do you do? You keep quiet. <laughs> soldiers. <laughs> Zoo soldiers. 16 dead in Katsina. <laughs> hey, black people in this UG. Black, black. There's something wrong with you people. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, black people. Your reasoning capacity is zero. Absolute zero. Absolute zero. And who caused all this nonsense is the amalgamation of the North and the South. The white man came without regard for anybody. Lugard came and said, you, 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 you. Uh, your land, I'll divide you into two. Half will be in Dahomey, which is a Benin Republic, and half will be in the zoo. And um, uh, your name is now Nigeria. And I keep asking this very simple question. There is a Yoruba person in 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 um, Porto Novo, in Benin Republic, and a Yoruba man in Badagri. And they speak the same language. They eat the same food. Everything is the same. The same culture. The same. Everything is the same. And you divide them into. This is one thing about colonialism. I don't understand. And why we have not challenged it, I do not know. You have a white man travel all the way from Scotland, Lugard, come to your land, Yoruba land, and cut you into two, into two, and say one of you, your name is now Dahomey, the Benin Republic, subsequently, and the other one, you are Nigerians, and you accepted it. And that same white man now said, you that is a Yoruba man, Odudua, sorry, Odudua man in Odua, man in Badagri, you are related to one uh, um, Ahmed uh, Kaparafi from from uh, from Kanembro Empire. She did not believe on job. Does that make sense to anybody? I, that, that is, I, I keep trying to understand the level of black man's intellectualism. It doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. Now that the whole world is saying black lives matter and reviewing all the atrocities of colonialism, why is it not possible for our, for us now to say no? That even the 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 Oduduwa people in the Republic and the Oduduwa people in the zoo Nigeria, they are all one people. What is wrong with that? I ask. What is wrong? I ask. Is Luga that caused all this problem? Today, people are saying was the amalgamation of northern and southern Nigeria in 1914 a mistake? Of course, it was a mistake. Who doesn't know it was a mistake? Oil and water can never mix. Can never, not now, not tomorrow, not ever. That is why there is no progress. That is why nothing is happening. That is why people graduate, come out of school with no jobs. Do you know the most frightening thing of all is that these graduates without a job, they are not even moved. They are not angry. They are not upset. They just get on with life and prayer and fasting. Why do you need to keep the zoo as one, knowing fully well that the amalgamation was a mistake? Why do you need to keep the zoo as one, knowing fully well that dividing people and conquering and ruling them the way, same way that the colonialists did was a very bad thing? Why can't we understand that? And in the midst of all of these things, in the midst of all this evil, you would think that something good will come somehow, maybe one day, but no. <laughs> What is happening? Who remember the list I gave you before, or, or I rolled out before about those who are in power? Where they come from? Are they not all full of people? Now listen, how Nigerian government officials diverted eight hundred million dollars from secret oil sale? Who are the people that did this? Fulani? <laughs> no, no, no EFCC, none whatsoever. The same people. Oh? 
Now, former NMPC, I'm just reading you only the headlines. I don't want to disturb you too much because I'll, I'll take some calls in a minute. Former NMPC boss Yakubu claims 98% of over 3.8 billion found in his house are gifts. Cash, 3.8 billion cash. Where is he from? <laughs> uh, me, he's from the north. His name is Andrew Yakubu. Are you following? One Nigeria. Are you following in this whole one Nigeria garbage? How they are squandering money left, right, and center. But that is um, EFCC, huh? <laughs> an anti graft. And he is fighting. Uh, uh, Nigeria is winning the war. Or should I say Nigeria is winning the war on, anti, on, on, uh, on, on corruption. The anti corruption crusade. They have now received a certificate from, from Mozambique that they are doing very well. Rubbish. All nonsense. All garbage. 100 million barrels of crude oil shipped to China. Sold for eight hundred million dollars, shared by the late Abakiari Malami and my country Baru and others. All for learning. This oil is the reason why they want one Nigeria. And the most painful part is that we are obliging them. We are allowing them to get away with murder. That is what I don't understand. How can God create a people to become so submissively docile that all this impunity is happening day after day and they do nothing? And the reservoir is in jail. And these are the people. They say in billions. Look at them. Full on. And they want to go and arrest somebody in Egypt. And they're calling a weak all sorts of names for defending a defenseless woman. So, so if you weak, they will arrest the, the, the lady and take her away. And uh, uh, those that received $800 million will be the ones prosecuting her. You people are sick in the brain. You shall be going, you people are mad. People are mad. Who are the ones going to do the, the prosecuting? The same people that sold oil to China, pocketed $800 million. Yes. Of course, the zoo has fallen. And they know it. That is why before we come on, they, they panic. They know the whole world is listening. And they are worth nothing before the whole world. They are worth nothing. 800 million dollars. Not naira dollars. And you're in one Nigeria. <laughs> Shame on all of you. Who is going to probe the oil fraud? Who is going to prove? One person said, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, so somebody tells Buhari, I, I ask for proof. Which Buhari, I ask you? Which Buhari? The one that can address the public or the one who cannot? Is it the one with the hole in the neck or the one who, the one that looks like a 25 year old boy? What is wrong with you people? Keep deceiving yourselves. Keep lying to yourselves. Zoo animals everywhere. Zoological Republic. Keep deceiving yourselves. Who is going to probe who? Eight hundred million dollars missing, and all the Samitu is in jail for four hundred million naira they gave him to run PDP campaign. This is the beginning. The zoo is crumbling right, left, right, and center, and they know it. Don't they know it? Of course they do. All, all the all the all the yappers. They will have something to yap about very soon. They will yap. That will be. They they will run out of oxygen. Because we will give them something to yap about very, very soon. Look at the zoo falling and collapsing every day. They won't talk about it. 800 million missing. These are the idiots begging for foreign aid. Grant, they will go to, to World Bank, give us loan. They go to IMF, give us loan. But meanwhile, the, that is one thing about black people. Meanwhile, the money you have inside, you are siphoning. You are stealing it. You can see for yourselves. Can you see it? Can you see it? Full army in power. Don't worry, in 2093, uh, you people will vote for them again. And by that time, we'll be out anyway. We have no time for these idiots. The thing we have to with this rubbish is this how a nation is supposed to function? A country? I'm asking you. Is this how a country is supposed to function? Some of you cannot answer. You can't answer, can you? Crude oil being sh uh, shipped all over the place, asking for who is going to investigate who? Who is it, Fulani? Investigating Fulani? How is that possible? 
How is that possible? I ask you. That these are a bunch of illiterates. Illiterates, they know nothing. If they were intellectuals, maybe you come need I can enjoy it. They are nothing. They are nothing, absolutely nothing. Only to steal. Only to steal. Only to steal. Only to loot. The only thing Fulani knows is to loot. To loot. Every blessed day stealing and killing. That's all they do. Kill and steal. That's all they do. And you idiots are so, talking about one Nigeria. One Nigeria. Useless set of people. One of the few people that speaks up, that speaks the truth, his eminence, and Anthony, Cardinal Anthony Olubumi Okoje has spoken. He has decried the level of corruption going on. <laughs> this, he is crying over corruption. Of course, the man that I respect very much, his eminence. He is crying over corruption. Him and Kuka of um, of um, uh, Bishop Kuka is very outspoken man that I have regard for. They are crying over the level of corruption in the country. But mind you, that in 2015, the Obama and everybody said, we need Buhari in order to fight corruption. Today, his eminence is crying over corruption. Everybody is crying over corruption. So what have they been doing for five years? Buhari before he died and those who are ruling in his name. <laughs> Hey. Black people, black. <laughs> oh dear. He is saying this. Nigeria is supposed to be waging war on corruption, <laughs> but they are more corrupt than the war. <laughs> hey, God in heaven! Those who are waging war on corruption are the ones selling crude oil and pocketing eight hundred million dollars. <laughs> hey. And they are the they are fighting corruption in the zoo, <laughs> in the zoo, <laughs> in the zoo. <laughs> Unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> very, very sad indeed. In a statement, Okoje said EFCC is supposed to be part of the solution <laughs> to the problem of corruption, but the twist of events has shown that the war on corruption has been lost. EFCC are now themselves corrupt. <laughs> They came to fight corruption, but they are now themselves corrupt. Then why is Oli Samutu still in prison? I ask. All those who are keeping quiet, all those Igbo men and women who are keeping quiet over Oli Samutu. You see how the Fulanis are defending their own? They steal, they loot, they kill, and they defend their own. Only you people uh, yapping rubbish all the time. <laughs> As one brother wrote very eloquently, he said there are saboteurs everywhere, that every ethnic group have their own saboteurs. But there is something special about an Igbo sabo. That an Igbo saboteur is a special breed altogether. Uh, maybe I'll try and publish that very brilliant piece he wrote. I don't know what his name is. Somebody sent it to me. He said everywhere you have saboteurs, but uh, Igbo sabo is, is very special. <laughs> very, very clean and special. That his own sabo is spiritual. Spiritual saboteur. He what drives him or her? He doesn't. He he or she wouldn't know. But sabotage is in their system. That is why an evil sabo is very deadly. I've asked some of you before to go and watch the film Tears of the Sun. I keep saying this thing every blessed year. Tears of the Sun is a Bruce Willis movie. He was the lead actor in that very movie. It is about Biafra. Tears of the Sun is about Biafra. Go and try and watch it. And after watching that movie, I was in a movie theater in London. After watching that very movie, I came out, I think that was about 1997 or thereabout, that movie came out. Do you know, after watching that movie, I asked myself, how is it that, that Hollywood of all people, Bruce Willis, how come the scriptwriter knows that evil people are saboteurs? How... I, it comes to them naturally in that very movie in that very movie a hollywood movie hollywood movie the the sabo they are betraying ojuku is an evil man in a hollywood movie that tells you all you need to know now sabo gadere that must be sabo he was there and they asked him he was shot dead of course they asked him why are you betraying your head of state 
He said because uh, his family was being held in Lagos. Go and watch that movie. In fact, I'm giving... Chinas, all of you, go and look for Tears of the Sun. Cut out that beat where the Sabo was confessing. The Sabo was an Igbo man who was confessing. Go and bring it out and, and let the whole world see it. So that all the Sabo you're seeing today, they're all, by nature, they are there. If Hollywood knows, then so, so should you. But we are IPOB now. We have frustrated them into oblivion. The soul is adrift. The genesis of the problem was the amalgamation. Those that said, oh, we love it. Uh, many rainbow nation, many cultures, diversity. Talking rubbish. Look at the diversity. It's bringing you death, corruption, looting, suffering, pain, poverty, disease. You can't see it. Maybe your family is benefiting from the loot. Or maybe you're one of those they gave um, uh, the, an oil well to. And you're yapping rubbish and defending evil. You will defend evil because you're a black man. It is in your nature as a black person to defend evil. It is in your nature. And so uh, as we are discussing, I had a very important meeting earlier today. And as we are discussing about Sabo and their spread around where we come from. And the fact of the matter is this. Our people are very, very competitive by nature. But they don't know when they stray from being competitive to being very jealous. And most evil men are given or prone to jealousy because they are naturally competitive. They say to themselves, oh, that man who is there, I wish I'm the one who is there, or I wish it's my son or my daughter who is doing it. And from there, wanting to be there, which is a very legitimate aspiration, to better yourself, to be somebody you are not. And once they find out that they cannot meet that very standard, they're going to sabotage. That's the way they are. It's in their nature. Nobody can take that away from an evil man. It's how they are. That's how they are wired. If they try to be like you and they cannot be like you, the next thing is envy. And another thing is, what do I do to bring him down to my level? That's the way they are. It's, it's in their nature. You can't take it away from them. That's how they are. <laughs> the IPOV is one very strong family. Indivisible and unbreakable. Unbreakable. And at last, somebody has spoken. And spoken the truth that everybody wants to hear. Professor, a man that I have respect for as well. Professor Banji Akintoye. And I wish they can facilitate this Oduduwa uh, Republic very quickly. They are the ones I want to work with. Those in Oduduwa, pursuing Oduduwa, are the people that I want to work with. Not just telling me about restructuring and fixing Nigeria now. Those Oduduwa people that are pursuing Oduwa Republic, they are the ones I want to work with. No other group. Professor Akinto here. <laughs> said restructuring is not the solution. Of course not. <laughs> it is not and can never be. He has spoken. <laughs> I believe our leaders from the four zones are Femi Fere, Ohaneze, Pandev, and Middle Belt Forum. Who have put this forward believe that it was a way of compelling uh, Buhari, of course, a dead man, uh, to at least um, effect some structural reforms in the system. But it hasn't happened. And he has no hope that they ask him, you mean that restructuring is no longer a solution to Nigeria's problem? He said yes, because it's too late. We have passed beyond the point of politics. A section of the country is actually trying to conquer the other part of the country. And this is a man saying this. He's the one saying this. Not me, a prof professor. Akinto is the one saying this. Not not him, the kind No, of course not. I'm only quoting him what he said. Restructuring is the argument of politics. It is not a response to war. The foreigners have brought war. And you're discussing politics and they're conquering you. They are cutting up your daughters into pieces. And you cannot see it. <laughs> Sabo, Sabo is blind. Sabo can never see it. They cut up your daughters in your villages. And they spread the parts all over the place. Sabo, can you see? No, you can't. Professor Akintoye is telling you that the Fulanese are speaking the language of war. And you, with your stupid restructuring, you are speaking the language of politics. Who do you think will win? I like what he said so much. I, I love it. I love the words he used. 
you don't use the language of politics to address a war situation. That, that is why they are conquering all of you, one after the other. And that is why the zoo, in desperation, in desperation, are now targeting IPOB family members in Vietnam because we are all over the world. And it is also a source of envy for people that IPOB, we are the largest mass movement in the world. When we match the earth shakes, of course. Who doesn't know that? Who doesn't know that? Our people in Vietnam, I received this very uh, correspondence that our people in Vietnam are in very great danger because people working in the zoo embassy in Hanoi are conniving with the Vietnamese government, bribing them and giving them money. They sell all this illicit oil. They have promised to give oil to, 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 to Vietnam so they can start the deportation of our people, so they can start the imprisonment of Biafrans in Vietnam. They sent pictures to the Vietnamese immigration and police. And some of our people were invited to immigration office in Ho Chi Minh City and forced to sign an undertaking stating that there will be no more IPOB activities in Vietnam or that our insignia should not be showed and we are going to take them to court in Vietnam. We are going to get a top human rights lawyer who will take them to court in Vietnam. It is their country, yes. That Biafra must exist. Is it not the same Vietnam that fought USA? You fought France and USA for your independence, didn't you? Vietnam. That now you want to come and support evil. It cannot happen. We we'll take them to court in their own land. And that's what we're going to do. And I have a very... Um, I would want to some clarifications, I would say, on what is actually happening in the West. Because we have our coordinator, Terry Nemi, who is the coordinator of the Western region, and I want to bring him to tell the whole world what is happening. The whole world is actually listening. Terry Nemi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening from here, sir. Good evening to you. Can you tell us precisely what is happening in the Western region and how you intend to fix it? Okay. Um, in the Western region, we've been having some challenges, though we've also measured some level of success so far. What are those challenges you're having? Hold on. What are those challenges you're having? Okay, the challenges we are having, it seems to be like um, some people have decided to have a parallel government in the West here as a result of the previous um, um, leader. And um, these people are just working on their own differently and going against every instruction that comes from the leadership. Now, hold, so, now hold, on, hold, the line, hold on for a second. Let me go back to... The, our opening this very evening about black people and lack of discipline. If your administration is over, or for some reason you are your services are no longer required, you go away quietly. You may be recalled the next day. Some of you are so daft and so foolish. Do you know how many times our Biafra National Coordinator was suspended? For my POB based our national coordinator today. Do you know how many times Amarachi Gift Ibe was suspended? Look at her position today. What is wrong with you people? If your tenure is over, it is over. You hand over everything. I don't want you people to compel me to use force on you as stupid black people who cannot reason. Once your tenure is over, you hand over. And that's the end of it. Tomorrow you may be recalled to come and serve. Biafra is not going to be like the zoo or any other useless African country where somebody serves and at the, uh, at the end of their tenure to go will be a problem. There will be no parallel government in Lagos and as we are speaking today, you come back next week Sunday. If it persists, I will expel them from IPOB. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Is that it? Do you have anything else to tell us about what is happening in the West? Apart from Lagos State, the Edo State Coordinator has, he has just cut himself off 
from from the from the leadership of the West. He told me emphatically that he's not he's not ready he's not ready to work with me. He had those state coordinators, uh Mazidi Vichiredu, that he's not ready to work with me. He doesn't want to open his state to to the leadership. He said that except I work with him alone that I cannot uh, have access to know his team that he's working with. So he, he has just cut himself off and for Close to a month that he has not been attending our meetings. Uh, Edo State Coordinator was um, is an old boy. is is one of us from the beginning, and um, I saw him as a hardcore. I will instruct the relevant line managers to be able to look into this very matter, and um, I would suggest you refer it to the conflict resolution committee so they can hear both sides of the story. You have said what's happened then when he goes to the conflict resolution committee there he will tell us exactly why he adopted the position that he adopted but i must make it very very clear that people must be loyal and obedient to their superior because ipob is a mass movement under street command and control rules you must obey your superior and they understand that and that is what what is going to happen and as i said you will refer this very matter to the conflict resolution committee and there they will look into it and come to a resolution within the next seven days thank you very much for being with us and continue the very wonderful work that you're doing that is Tari Nemi. and as i said earlier it is it was my intention to try and open the lines for a little bit to see if our people may have one or two contributions to make if you have to if you have anything to say you can say that now or you can call our lines now as usual and the time now is approximately 12 minutes past 9 p.m in the land of biafra if you want to if you have anything to say or should i say any contribution to make you are at liberty to do so but i must also announce this very evening very very critically please i must announce that our people in canada i must say what they have done they color on the line they color, stay where you are they color on the line i must announce this very evening what our people in canada are doing they're doing very well fantastically well but as i have said Madam Nenayanya must have access to every IPAB account everywhere in the whole world so we know what is happening. We don't want what happened to us in the USA before to happen to us again. We are criminals took over our proceeds and decided to go and work for the zoo instead. We are not going to make that mistake. So Madam Nenayanya must have access. Our sister Nenayanya must have access to every account. But I must, I want to recognize this very evening the Igbo Diaspora Development Agency in Canada. I repeat, Igbo Diaspora Development Agency for their contribution of $12,000 to the coffers of IPOB to support what we are doing. We commend them extensively and some people also in the USA, they are now waking up, as you can see, and no longer have um you know terrible things to say about the usa because our people are waking up a lot of them are now coming up to do the needful so usa and canada they are now waking up and we are encouraging and asking them to do even more we thank all of you we thank all of you please very very important and i have also a very special announcement to make this is an instruction it is a direct order it is an order it is an instruction that from tonight all attacks against our Odudua brethren, all attacks against Yoruba people must cease in, with immediate effect. As I told you, I had a very important meeting earlier today. Very critical meeting. In the next few days, you will hear the details. And in that meeting, we resolved that we are going to work together as a people. And I am asking henceforth, with immediate effect, every attack verbal or otherwise against Ududua entities or personalities will cease. Despite every provocation, you are not allowed to respond or to retaliate 
that where a baseless allegation has been leveled against us, endeavor to respond to it by confining yourself to addressing those issues raised and not attacking the personality. Very, very important. You understand this this evening, please. I know that the Janjaweed, the Fulani Caliphate, they will go and create many uh, fake accounts with Yoruba names to try to provoke us, to attack us. Our focus is on Asorok. To make sure we crumble the zoo this year as i told you before if we fail to crumble the zoo in this 2020 it is our fault we must crumble it this year our focus is on asorok and to crumble the zoo very very important very very critical you are not to attack any yoruba person or their entities it is an order from me this evening it should cease henceforth it should cease henceforth Please, I had a very high-level critical meeting with Yoruba stakeholders. Sorry, Oduduwa, I don't want to use Yoruba. With Oduwa stakeholders. And they are pursuing what we are pursuing. And we cannot be seen to be antagonistic towards one another. Because the foreigners are the ones laughing and rubbing their hands with glee. We cannot give them that opportunity anymore. As simple as that. I have a caller on the line that color are you still there and can you for goodness sake hear me yes i can hear you my leader please your name and where you're calling from my name is biafra if i'm calling from british columbia canada from british columbia you are biafra if where do you come from in biafra land please i came from israta in Akwai booms Biafra Alan. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. We are listening. Go ahead. You you have gone silent. Yes, go ahead. I love you so much, my leader. Um, I, I've, I've been following you for so long time, 2012 uh, till today. I've been a person that I met you before when I was in Malaysia. You have been a great man. And God have used you to elaborate the whole world. I love you, and there is no other, no no person can uh, block this um, or can stop this movement. My leader, you are the man that God sent, and you told us that this struggle is whiter than and whiter than snow. And I believe that I have been working with my own capacity to make sure this Biafra restoration come to reality. I was the one who started the IPOB in Philippines. Wow. I started the IPOB in Philippines before I now hand over, before I moved down to Canada. So the Philippines is working strong. Yes, it is. So I have been a, a assistant coordinator here in British Columbia. But my leader, I follow you because of what you say. I didn't follow you because of I just follow, you know, I know I don't want to go to the detail, but I just want to thank you and I'm overwhelmed to speak with you. But there is a small thing I want to beg you, please. Go ahead. Because in your leadership, sometimes uh, people don't understand, of course, uh, in, in, in all the family, you might have uh, maybe a child or that that might not like to follow you the your, your instruction you know they might be causing confusion yes now a quiet room state is having a very big problem which you might not know the details but i call my family because i even put the radio biafra uh, uh, satellite in my compound there and also have some information there my family are giving me information. So the Aquaibum has problem with coordinator issues. My family has reporting to me. Very, very bad. And I don't want to put my people in the danger. So please, they said they don't want the coordinator that is working now. It's causing a lot of problems. You don't want to work with anybody. And they even write him a letter asking him to work with every other person. I personally see every other coordinator that has signed that paper. I also signed with my hands. This guy refused to work with anybody. See, today, he doesn't want to work with anybody. My leader, please, I know this Biafra we are want 
is democracy. It is not something that people will say, this person we don't want. And they will force that person to, to be. I don't know. It, it, we don't want something that happened to him instead. To when they when they force uh Uzarima give Imo people. No, the acquired one said they don't want this guy. This person don't want to work with anybody. My leader, I'm begging you, I'm, I'm on my name. I cannot work for I uh, Biafra to restore. Then my own Biafra in Aquaibom is down. I was expecting Bi Aquaibom Biafra to be even more stronger than Abia State or any other part of Aquaibom. The second in command was Philip Ethiom. He was a man that I love so much. And God rest you. God rest you. People were saying that, hey, you cannot fool Ibo man. Ibo man always cheat, do all those things. But God stand with you. They give you everything you refuse. And that idiot they call Irwanya. I could remember when he was talking on Radio Biafra that any day he goes against the rule and the regulation of IPOB that if they suspended him, he will go to the floor member. But today, Irwanya is causing confusion. Irwanya is causing problem everywhere because he was suspended because he wanted to attack the government of IPOB. He will never better for him. He took old, and that old will follow him till his generation. I am Biafra if I'm speaking. I know him. If you can play back, if they can play back the 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 the, the, the radio that he was speaking into from 2013 to 2014, you will hear him very clear. How do we know it? We do. We know that idiot from Radio Biafra. He was nobody. He was nobody. He was nobody. Don't when don't you know? You know let, let me let me tell you what. Let me tell you one thing oh about, about 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 uh, about about saboteurs. A, a saboteur doesn't have relevance. If you mention a saboteur's name, you give them relevance. So just ignore every saboteur you may have come across. Our work, we are on schedule. Our work is going on. It is unstoppable. Don't mind it. Do, do you have them? I said there was a Hollywood movie. And what I wrote down was Tears of the Sun. In that Hollywood movie, the only saboteur there was an evil man. So don't be surprised. Okay? We are moving forward. My happiness is that... God in heaven, Chico Kikabiyama, structured IPOB in such a way that it's unbreakable. It doesn't matter who you are. You live, and IPOB continues. Continues to work. So, since IPOB did not fall when I was detained yes. illegally, did not fall when I was in prison, did not fall when they came to kill me. Oh, come on. Nothing can stop IPOB. I thank you very much, my dear brother. I have heard what you've said. And we are going to do the best we can to resolve the issues in Aquaibum as one family. Aquaibum is very strong. Very, very strong. I have a caller again on the line. That caller, can you hear me? This is Radio Biafra. We are live and direct. Please go ahead. No, 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 no. He is, you are listening to your system and I don't like it. When you call us, you don't listen to your system, please. You don't do that. I have a caller on the other line. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, raise your voice, your name, and where you're calling from, please. Hello, Mazi. Good morning from here. My name is Okebra. I'm Chedos here um, from Umaka. Umaka is in Olo. Yes. In most of Biafra. And please go ahead. I'm speaking from India. From India? Greater Noida, India. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, Mazi, uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Well, I keep saying it every time I draw strength from what you say, from your teachings, history, and everything. Sometimes people ask me, why am I so mad about Biafra? Why am I so, why am I so this man? Even whatever he says, I don't mean to be true. I told him that, listen, as a human being, when you lose those, these two relevance, you are never complete and can never function. Your history and your land. These are, these are two things you cannot buy with money. Nothing can give you this. And this is what this man has brought back. This is what has triggered the mind and, of every young Biafran. 
We are following him because he can give us what nobody can give us. When somebody brings your history back to you, which is what is going to give you relevance, there's no way you can build without your history. You must know where you're coming from. And Mazi, you have tried enough to trace back our history that is older than 5,000 years to us and make us understand where we come from. And that is what we are proud of. Thank you. The first democracy in the world. Of course. The world was witnessed in Biafra. Of course. Biafra, the first democracy so, in the whole world, of course. Yes. These are some things, these are things that when you look at it, you become proud of where you come from. An American can die under the flag of the USA. Why? Because they know their history. Yes. The reason why nobody can talk about Nigeria, nobody is proud of Nigeria, is because Nigeria doesn't have a history. And there's no way you can maintain a place that doesn't have history. No it doesn't have history. It doesn't have history. You cannot come from Africa and you don't have history. Oh, your history starts from, from, from uh, 1914. And Africa is supposed to be one of the oldest places on this very earth. And your history is only from 1914. It doesn't make any sense at all. And that is why they are afraid of us. That is why we are learned. That is why our enemies are afraid. And that is why we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. I have said it before. Do not respond to Sabo. Don't respond to them. They are irrelevant. Without mentioning IPOB, Biafra, Nam, the Kano, they are irrelevant. In fact, without mentioning Nam, the Kano, and IPOB, they are irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. Don't give them time and space by mentioning the names of idiots who do not matter. Irrelevant people. Please, very, very critical. We understand that. I have this caller again on the line. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Marzi, uh, thank you and I congratulate you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Osasu. I'm an IPOB uh, under the banner of uh, Uwa Sophia. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Loud and clear. Go ahead. Yeah, good. Thank you very much for your work. So I cannot just go much deep, but... Uh, and where are you from, please? Where are you from? In Biafra land, where are you from? I am Edo State. Which part of Edo? Edo State, Igodomi, Igodomi. Igodomi, Igodomi. Thank you very much. Inicity. 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 Precisely. Thank you. Please. But I reside, in, I reside in Italy. You are in, now. you are in Italy. So what do you say to people from Benin who may not have embraced Biafra entirely, what do you say to them? You could meet with the people, that is. There, what do you say to them? There are, there are many, many are ready to embrace it, but they are still uh, very much afraid because they know uh, uh, the history of the of their monarchy, or let me put it that way if I'm not mistaken. You understand? I they do. Know, there are many, 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 many embrace it, but they are afraid. You understand? But gradually, we are doing the work. We and the, uh, our sister uh, uh, was Sophia, you understand? Yes, Owa is doing very well. Owa Sophia is yeah. doing very, very well. And I want to encourage her to continue her work. Owa Sophia is doing very, very well. Efe is doing very, very well. Um, Tamono is doing very, very well. Our people, those of you, uh, Darlington, all of you who are coming out, to Biafra Child, uh, um, all of you are doing very well. And um, also Simon Epa, all of you who are coming out every day, they are doing very well. Please go ahead. Please, uh, let me talk a little bit. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, Edo rep, uh, man, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, they are daughter, but I, don't, I forgot his name. Uh, please, uh, uh, it is my own opinion I want to give you, you uh, a little bit. Uh, the, the leader should look into his uh, matter because uh, he looks to be he looks to be coordinated very good in Edo State. You know, Edo State is so very sensitive. You understand? Yes. And he know much of a, he know much of Edo State. So, so when looking into his matter, you must look to his matter in a way that he will understood Edo very well. Yes. Understand? Yes, I know. I, I, so know. That this can, I understand what you're saying. So that this can work well there. You of understand? Course. Yes, yes. As long as I've heard of him anyway, I've never talked with him anyway. But just because of our past uh, 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 working hand to hand together, even I, I'm even planning now that each time I go to to Edo State, I will see him and we will visit some. Uh, some uh, uh, important place that will even enhance uh, or enrich the the movement of uh, of uh, uh, IPOB. Okay. You understand? Very well. But, uh, but, uh, but I will be saying that I still want to encourage you a little more that uh, you should not distract and uh, and uh, no matter the circumstances, uh, uh, we are behind you. 
no matter the obstacles, no matter the deceit, or no matter the frustration the enemy would like to cause, we are solidly behind you. Of you course, understand? Of course, I know that. Uh, that. How, how many are there? Umu Koko, they are. How, how many are there? And thank you very much. I've heard what you said, and also your, your counsel. I have a caller on the line. This caller, can you please, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mazi. My name is uh, Chupu Emmanuel I.K. Chupu. I'm calling from South Africa, the coordinator of indigenous people of Yafra IPOB KZN. Thank you very much. You're welcome to the program. Please go ahead. Mazi, you made me a happy man on the singular tweet you made last week. You say that uh, you are going to material out plans to stop the ginger weed access to the oil money. Of course. Please. That thing you said has made me a happy man. Since I joined IPOB, I've been following you and I've been doing whatever you ask us to do. But that your singular tweet has made me to submit my soul into the IPOB. I've been submitting my body. I'm pleading you in the name of Chipo Kikabiyama to facilitate your plan. I will. And you will see what will happen this year. You will hear it. Thank you. You will see it. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. And the whole world will understand how serious we are. They will know how formidable we are. Umokokuka <laughs> was very soon, of course. They will be on the run very, very soon. I have a caller on the line. This caller, give us your name and where you're calling from, if you may. Hello, my name is uh, Mr. Robert Unebu. I'm from MBC and I'm calling from Tyler, Texas. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, I want to commend you for your, uh, the great job you are doing. You have really proven to us the evils that uh, we have a leader. And they've also made us to understand that uh, what we're going through right now will ultimately come to an end. You know? yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, commend you. I commend your strategy. Forget about all those people you know, who appears to be gullible, that's where I refer to them, or who are kind of parochial. Because going by what, uh, uh, what uh, I think Lord Luger, the book he wrote, Do Do a Mandate in Tropical Africa, he referred to us as people who live by the moment and who, ha who don't have uh, any apprehension for the future. But I'm glad that today, with you, you have proven to the whole world that uh, we are far-sighted people. You know, we know where we're heading to. You know, of course. I was born during the civil. I was born during the civil war, so I understand what it means. So when people who are not part of that uh, tragedy talks, you know, I pity them. You know. Yes. So uh, don't disvote your strategy to anybody. You don't own anybody anything. Keep on planning what you're planning. We're strongly behind you. Of course, I know that. You know, I have no doubt. We are strongly behind you. So. The suburb two, as you said, is just uh, their uh, their existence is just temporary. You know, if you if you if you give them attention, you give them relevance. That so is true. They don't need it. You know, so keep on f focusing. And uh, with respect to what the Fulanis are doing right now, I believe that uh, your strategy of mobilization and sensitization and constantization of our people should be ongoing. You know, we are helping with respect to that because so many of our people appears not to understand the, the, the agenda of the Fulanese, you know. Yes. So, I mean, taking you a little bit back on history, in 1967, I have the clip, Ojubu, after the Aburi Accord what? was asked, yes. you know, was asked uh, 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 what he feels on the plans of the Fulanese, he said that their, that their agenda never changes. It the never. The is that they change the strategy. Never. They they change the, the agenda strategy. is the same for Fulani. Always the same to conquer, yeah. to subdue and to yeah, subjugate. Yeah. yeah. They change their tactics from time to time. You know, <laughs> now with the uh, 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 corruption uh, 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 scandal that have emerged themselves into, that trying to find a way to divert attention 
they are by uh, 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 focusing right now on what is happening in NDDC. That's a strategy. Of you know? course. That's a strategy. Of course. So we have to keep on mobilizing our people so that we be on guard. We be on alert. You know, of to, uh, 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 to prevent them from uh, from castrating. Because I'm quoting the word of Ojibu. He said that uh, what they want is to practically castrate. <laughs> and that's what I have done. That is why in it, that, that is but you know that is that was why in Imo State, in your state, because you're from Mbisa, that was why they managed to plant somebody from the fourth position into number one. That is an absolute castration of Imo State as a whole, not just one individual. I thank you, my dear brother, for calling. I have somebody on the other line. That very person, are you still there? And can you hear me? Yes, man, in Nandikano. This is, uh, can you hear me, sir? Loud and clear, please go ahead. Okay, my name is uh, Moses Arimado. I'm from Ngobala, in Imo State. I'm calling you from um, Ohio, United States of America. And they were one name, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead. Well, I, uh, for the matter of this uh, um, uh, forum, this platform, I have a few questions for you before I go into my main uh, uh question or contribution this evening uh, please bear with me uh you are certain that um elohim sent you am i correct who else could have said how could i have survived if not for the no, go, go, go with me please. yes i'm with you all the way to go. yes of course of course all right yes you also, without you hesitation also in agreement that you are also in agreement that you operate by the directives of El Shaddai, am I correct? Absolutely. Wonderful. And also, good. Now, if you look at the laws and instructions given to Moses in Torah, mm -hmm. it, it, Elohim made it clear uh, to Moses what the expectations were for the children of Israel. Yes. And in terms of, uh, um, you know, mother, in terms of kidnapping, in kind of, in, instead yes. of doing evil, yes. it, it made it clear. Now, I, I am appealing to my Biafran brothers and sisters that the, the kingdom of God is at hand. When Biafra comes, there will be no nonsense. There will be no room. We are going to follow the Torah. We are going to follow the law of Elohim. We are going to do things according to the children of God. Therefore, we are not going to have time. Our money is not going to be used to build prisons uh, for criminals. Our, our, our money, if we are to build prisons, is going to be for those that committed uh, minor misdemeanor like uh, traffic uh, offenders or those are not paying child support but for criminals for those that looted our uh, treasury for those that, that nobody can loot treasury if you, you don't even have money to loot because our okay. balance is the way somebody do it in, you are in ohio if you go to times square in america you see how much america has in their in their federal reserve how much they have borrowed and how much interest they're paying back that's how it's going to be in biafra there'll be no money to steal from anywhere if anybody steals money in biafra land you will be you listen you'll be tried and you'll be hanged in your father's compound the nearest street your father's you'll be hanged at every place biafra cannot be like any other useless african country it can never be Exactly. That, that is what I'm getting at. That is why that we are going to use their bodies to feed our fishes in the ocean because there's no room to put them in prison. For what? Why should we condone evil? We cannot keep them. There's no room for them to be uh, prison the well so that we can entertain them and use our money and feed them. No, we will use their bodies and feed our fishes in the ocean. Now, this is the time all Biafran people must repent now. The, the kingdom of God is at hand before Biafra comes because there will be no mercy. This is not a joke. We cannot tolerate what is happening in you in the holy it land. It can't of happen. Biafra. God is my witness. It can never happen. And my dear brother, I thank you. I thank you very, very much for your call. I thank you very much. Biafra land, we are not going to condone any nonsense. You must be dreaming. If you think you are, you are going with siren, you know there will be no siren in Biafra land except ambulance, police. Only ambulance, police, and um, and uh, who else will have ambulance and fire service?
Only. Even the head of state, there'll be no, no siren for you. Because you'll be like any other person. There'll be no siren in Biafra land for anybody, commissioner, uh, your governor. Rubbish. You are like any of us. So any day you mess up, we take you out of office. If you say you won't, you won't go, we'll drag you out of that place. There'll be no armed escort. No siren for anybody except for fire service, for police, and for, and for ambulance. If you don't know, anybody thinking that Biafra is going to be like the zoo, then you're dreaming. You better stay in your useless zoological republic. The caller on the line, can you hear me? The world is listening your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello, what's your name, sir? Good evening to you. Uh, the, my name is Chimizu. Calling from Germany. Go ahead. Chimizu, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Mazi, Mazi, I don't know. I don't know if our people have committed any of that smoke many, many countries treating us bad anyhow. No, 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 no. It is not an effect. It is what they do is that's what they do best. It is called castration, as our brother quite rightly said from the color from Texas. It is called that is what the Fulani does. You don't know Fulani. People don't know these people. We know them very well. That is what they do. They instigate. They go behind the back and they instigate. That's what Fulani does. That's, that's what they do. That is why tonight they will not be happy. Tonight that I have announced that from now going forward, we are no longer going to attack any any Yoruba. No Odud person will be attacked. You see, they won't, they won't be happy about it. That's who they are. They instigate. Please go ahead. Well, there is a, I, don't, I don't have much to say, but only that uh, you know, uh, uh, many things I need to say, but I don't. Um, um, then try and call me off, uh, off air, please. When I'm off air, you can call. Maybe that is the best way for us to proceed. I thank you very, very much for calling, my dear brother. I thank you very much. I have another caller on the line. Let me see if I can get hold of them. This caller on the line, can you hear me? If so, give us your name and where you're calling from. For the last time, the caller on the line, can you hear me? No, they cannot hear me. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from? No, they cannot hear me either. And that brings us to the end of tonight's program. It brings us to the end of tonight's program. Somebody is still trying to call. Let's see if we can get... The caller on the line, can you hear me? Good evening, Master. Good evening to you. Please, your name, raise your voice. Your name and where you're calling from, please. Okay, my name is Shitsu. Shitsu Olada. I'm in the park, right? Please go ahead, Shitu. I'm a massive fan of. Yeah, welcome to the program. Shitu, go ahead. We're listening. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would like to say I I really like what you are doing with um, IPOB and Stroke. It has it has opened the eyes of a lot of us. But what I notice is that the Afra needs to focus on the people of the Niger Delta. That's thirteen percent that uh, the Janja we are giving to them is what they feel they can. Uh, as in, they feel they are okay with it. You understand? Yes. The most I we are the only Yoruba person. I engage with with um, people from the so-called Ika Delta. Yes. I tell them. I I I, 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 tell, I tell them that I tell them that why don't you want to be Afra? It will be like um, no Ibo Ibo will dominate us all that all that rubbish and because they are getting thirteen percent so I don't know I think IPOB needs to do a lot of work on the Niger Delta. We 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 we, we have the the thing is that we don't have any Niger Delta to start with, um, Shitu. And which state do you come from in Yoruba land? Which state do you come from? I'm from Kora State. I'm one. We are one of the oppressed people. Oh my goodness! I'm a Yoruba man from Kora State. Oh my, your situation is even worse than most of us. I'm it, also a massive fan. I'm also a follower of Uchi for your debt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. At least this is one thing that I like about certain people in life. Despite everything we have said in the past about 
the the Oduduwa people in Kwara State, people still can see beyond the rhetoric to get to the actual substance of what we are saying in Radio Biafra. That is for the benefit of everybody. To us, my dear brother, we don't have anything like Niger Delta. They don't exist. Opopo is Igbo land. It doesn't exist. It just does not. We are all the same people. We have different languages. Sometimes a slight variation in culture. But every ethnic group will be on their own in Biafra land. Nobody will have the right to go into another ethnic group to tell them what to do. So all the debate and argument about domination doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. You know, if tomorrow. <laughs> Do you know that no no Igbo man even signed the amalgamation of Nigeria? Of course, I, we know that. Was, we know. In Biafra land, it was only the Obong of Calabar. Yes, that is true. That is true. We never signed. And we have a document. We have a document that they actually segregated later. Ibeku, my clan, where I come from, we never signed. So I can go to court and convincingly argue that Ibeku is not a part of Nigeria because we have all those that signed. We know all the warrant chiefs that signed. Ibeku was not one of them. We never signed up to anything at all. So you are right. But we know what the British have done and what they will continue to do to us. Uh, but I don't know why I picked that very call and you see it's some, a, a Yoruba person from Kwara State, an old white person from Kwara State. Unbelievable. I don't know what touched me to pick that very call. I thank him very much for calling. And on a day that I announced it, that nobody is allowed anymore to attack or to malign a Yoruba person and a Duduwa person, never. Because we are going to work together. And not like before, this very generation is different from the past. And big things are going to happen. Just watch this space. I thank you all very much for listening to us this very evening. And as always, you must take home with you what we have preached. That is why we are as formidable as we are. Indestructible. This very family of heaven itself, IPOB. That is why we say with every ounce of conviction, that Biafra to some people may just be a nation to others it may be a metaphor for something that we don't understand but to us it is our religion and here on radio Biafra is where we worship because Chuko Kikabi Amapromi Henine Luhim Adonai El Shaddai is our God from me from here it is good evening.